casting keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. <laughs> So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Stop. Yeah, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got him. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess? I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. About I mean, that. Reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. Well, you well, know, I even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning rush, weekdays, five to seven AM. Only on eleven alive. Some mornings what you He's only five, but he's already a hero. Meet the little person who saved his family when their home caught fire. Plus, calls tonight for two public officials to resign after neither called 911 after realizing a driver may have hit a man. It's an investigation you'll only see on 11 Alive. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. We want to start off with your weather. The rain's sticking around this week with chance for more storms in the coming days. The ever-present meteorologist Samantha Moore now joins us from the world headquarters to <laughs> alert us to what's going on. That Doppler's been such a busy thing over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, you would think it'd get worn out, right, with yeah. all the rain that we've had. But nope, it's still ticking, and we are seeing the showers move across North Georgia tonight. They've been heavier here on the north side in the past hour or so, so stretching from Floyd County over towards Gainesville. We have some pockets of moderate to heavy rain. And on the south side, where we had a line earlier, it pretty much fell apart. So just a few showers on the south side right now, but a lot more rain extending well back into the Arklatex. And we have to get this frontal boundary through here, and it's really going to kind of meander around here for the next day and a half or so. And then a stronger system will kick it through as we head into Thursday morning, and that's when things could get severe. So let's talk about that, when we could see that severe risk. Well, now the Storm Prediction Center has taken us out of that marginal chance for severe. So just general thunderstorms expected yet this evening and overnight. It's tomorrow night into Thursday morning that we have a better chance for severe storms. We have that level one chance across the Atlanta metro area extending west and then in northwest Georgia including parts of Floyd County we have a slight chance that means a little bit better chance for wide more widespread severe storms but it's mainly a damaging wind gust scenario here as well as a flood risk as we head into early Thursday but we can't rule out some isolated tornadoes either so we'll certainly be watching for that so our main threats are going to be Wednesday night into Thursday morning so during during that morning commute on Thursday, it could be a real mess with that chance for some very gusty damaging winds, some trees could be coming down with the saturated ground, and some flooding concerns still as more heavy rain will move in with that line and that low risk to see some spin up tornadoes. So coming up, we'll time it out for you and let you know hour by hour which times you can expect the worst of the weather. Sam, thank you. With more of those storms expected this week, now's the perfect time to download the 11 Alive app. If you haven't already, you can use it to get those weather alerts and receive thunderstorm and tornado warnings, even if your power goes out. Well, tonight, the concern over coronavirus hits very close to home. Around 200 people here in Georgia are self-monitoring themselves for symptoms of the coronavirus after returning from China. Now, we want to emphasize that these are not confirmed cases and that people are not showing symptoms at this point. 
Coronavirus has put a target on Asians worldwide, though, who don't have it. And tonight, they're sharing examples of coronavirus-related discrimination on social media. 11 Alive's Shinu Her has been going through some of the pictures and the video for us tonight. Yeah, guys, lots of them on social media. Asian people all over the world are calling this type of harassment a form of racism. Their posts show others harassing them and accusing them of having this virus. Hi, I'm, I'm so sorry, but I think that was a very racist comment. Yeah? Yeah. Wow, great. I said you dropped your coronavirus. Yeah, because um, you can't. You can't just look at me and assume I, I am can't? Chinese. Yeah, Instagram exactly. user Ingrid Chan from Canada posted this video online saying a man told her mother and sister they dropped their coronavirus. When Chan's sister confronted the man, he got defensive. I never even met. I've said it to 10 different people. This incident is now just one of many posted on the internet from this tweet in Spain saying hashtag I am not a virus in different languages to this tweet in Rome showing a bar forbidding people from China to enter. In Los Angeles, this woman posted a video on Facebook. She told NBC News she became concerned when she realized this man was talking about the coronavirus. She tells NBC News she didn't report it to police, but wanted to spread awareness and stop the sensationalizing about the virus from others. Now, the local nonprofit Center for Pan Asian Community Services says with all of this, it's important to remain focused on the facts of the virus and not let fear dictate how we treat others. All right, Chanu, thank you. New tonight on Primetime, a big cocaine bust in DeKalb County worth $3.5 million. A DeKalb canine alerted investigators to a dock area on Moreland Avenue and I-285. 32 kilos of cocaine were found inside cardboard boxes. This is part of the department's Operation Keep On Trucking campaign. No word if there were any arrests that were made. Also new tonight, an inmate escapes a West Georgia jail through a ceiling light. 34-year-old Gregory Keith Wyatt escaped from the Harrelson County Detention Center Monday night. Officials say once he got through the ceiling light, he made his way through a false wall and escaped through the north side of the building. The idea is to prepare students for the worst case scenario and hopefully save lives if there's ever a gunman on campus. But now two national teachers unions are saying some active shooter drills are ineffective and could traumatize students. The report released today recommends not including students in the drills and offers guidelines if districts do want to include children. Joe Hinke walks us through the report. The report on the impact of school safety drills for active shootings comes from the American Federation of Teachers, National Educators Association, and the organization Every Town for Gun Safety. They found in 2005, 40% of American public schools held lockdown drills to be prepared if there is a shooting. 95% did in 2015. In Fulton County Schools, the head of safety and security says the district conducts active shooter drills as part of a larger safety plan. Although active shooters, the active shooter scenario will have the greatest adverse impact, Statistically, our greatest concern is weather. Dr. Shannon Flunori says the district's plan comes after talking with and collaborating with districts across the country to create responsible drills. The report released today points to an unannounced code red drill at a Florida high school in 2018, leading to chaos and panic attacks with students believing it was not a drill at all, but a real threat on campus. Fulton says it avoids such a scenario by not having unannounced drills. We don't want to have the unintended consequences of um, unintentionally putting them in a position where their fear of this event overtakes them to the point that it has a psychological impact or a negative psychological impact upon them. Today's report recommends districts carefully consider drills and if they include students and teachers, they should not mimic an actual incident. It also states parents, students and teachers should have advanced notice and the drills should be tailored to the student's age and include input from school mental health professionals. Children that are under five, six, seven years old, live in the world of fantasy and magic. Psychotherapist Eddie Reese says that for the youngest students, realistic drills can lead to serious fears and even teens can be impacted. He suggests parents talking with their children afterwards. They go, yeah, it was all right, and it doesn't really bother them fine. Uh, but there are children that can be really scared, really imagine that it's going to happen. Reese says a shooter drill, if realistic and unannounced, can certainly have a physical and mental impact 
on you. Similar to having a close call while driving on the highway, Fulton County Schools tells us that they do carry out very realistic drills, but those are only for the district's police officers training with no students present. Let's get you up to speed on some of the other big stories tonight. A father, son, and his girlfriend among the four people killed in a plane crash in Gordon County. On board the plane, Roy Smith and his co-pilot, Ray Sloak, along with Smith's son, Morgan, and Morgan's girlfriend, Savannah Sims. All four were killed when the small plane crashed into some woods in Gordon County on Saturday. They were headed to Nashville, but disappeared from radar near Cherokee County. The investigation is still underway, but as you recall, the rain and snow of uh, Saturday may have been a factor in this tragic crash. Valdosta State University Dean on administrative leave after he was arrested in a child predator sting. There is, there is his mugshot. The GBI says Keith Walters was one of 14 suspects accused of traveling to South Georgia to meet children for sex. Walters is the Dean of the College of Science and Mathematics at Valdosta State. The school sent us this statement saying it's cooperating in the investigation and Walters will be on leave until internal and criminal investigations are complete. Polls have closed in the first of the, nation, uh, of the nation's primary happening tonight in New Hampshire and there is some news to report a shakeup. The Democrat Andrew Yang, whose 2020 campaign has promoted a freedom dividend of $1,000 a month for all adults, has announced that his run for the White House is coming to an end. We will keep an eye on the results tonight as they come in. We'll have all the updates for you right here on Primetime and 11alive.com. This story has so many of you talking. A family of eight in Kingston, Georgia, narrowly escapes a house fire thanks to a brave five-year-old. He had burns on his hands but still saved his family. This is Noah with singed hair and burns on his finger. The fire chief says Noah woke up to the fire and immediately jumped into action. The only way out was through a window, so Noah grabbed his two-year-old sister and they climbed out. They were into a nearby relative's home who alerted the rest of the family, saving all seven people total. The chief says that the fact that Noah did all of this and is just five years old is pretty remarkable. In doing that, he received some minor burns to his arm and his hands, of course, singed hair, and his two-year-old sister received some burns to her feet. But because of his quick actions, he also alerted the rest of the family members. So a total of eight family members were able to get out of the house with only minor injuries and smoke inhalation. The fire chief says the fire started from an overloaded socket. He also says there weren't any working smoke detectors. That's something they always encourage. On Friday, the fire department plans to honor young Noah with a life-saving award and a ceremony to follow. You can find details on 11alive.com. Coming up, calls to resign why two public officials are under fire after a cyclist was hit and then left in a ditch to die. Don't forget, we're streaming right now on 11 Alive, the YouTube channel. You can subscribe. You can join the conversation in the community section. Let us know what you think. We are always looking, watching, and the word we love, monitoring. We have more 11 Alive news in prime time right after the break. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They <laughs> are fun. And they're, they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. What's the best part about Uplink? 
Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers. Now to an exclusive reveal investigation. A Georgia man was left dying in a ditch for more than an hour. Nobody called 911, including a local police chief and a Georgia lawmaker. There is growing outrage and calls for accountability tonight on social media. Here's Reveal investigator Faith Abube with the story. This is uh, my work truck. Aaron Key's work truck has become both a symbol of comfort Ugh. and of pain. On one hand, it keeps him busy so grief doesn't consume him. I mean, I'm a painter. But it also reminds him every day of his older brother. I had plans for my brother. He was wanting to work with me, and he was supposed to go with me the next day. Instead, that day, September 12, 2019, he found out Eric died just three miles from home. A driver hit him while he was riding his bicycle down North Main Street in Cedartown. He's... He's my brother, man. And I wasn't ready for him to go. Polk County Coroner Tony Brazier also wasn't ready for what he would learn about the crash. We realized early on that this was going to be a, a problematic case. Documents obtained by the reveal show the driver, Ralph Dover, did not stop after hitting Eric. He kept driving with the hood and the passenger side of his windshield caved in. He drove almost a mile before coming to a stop here in this parking lot. But he didn't call police. He didn't call 911. He called a friend. That friend is attorney and Georgia State Representative Trey Kelly. Here's an old picture of the two of them together on Dover's Facebook page. The best case scenario, okay, let's say he told them, I think I hit a dog or a deer. Are you going to drive a mile away and call a lawyer? No. While Eric laid in the ditch dying, the state representative called Cedar Town Police Chief Jamie Newsom at home. Chief Newsom found out on that call Dover might have hit a person, but the reveal has learned the police chief did not call for medical help either. JJ, good. 21, report, sir. He called his sergeant on the police radio to call him at home. He tried to micromanage a 911 call, not from your home. You can't do that. Hill County 911 told us they could have been at the scene within five minutes. But by this point in time, we've missed the golden hour. When the sergeant eventually arrived, he found Eric's ball cap, then his red bicycle, and then the autopsy report says about 100 feet from the site of initial impact. In the ditch, the officer found Eric barely breathing. This may turn out to be a fatality. If Polk 911 had have gotten this call like it should have gotten, this boy might still be alive today. This mess here stinks to the high heavens. This reeks of the good old boy system. It's just something that, out of a nightmare that you wouldn't believe that would happen and that, somebody, that nobody would do nothing. The Polk County coroner believes someone could have saved Eric. On the death certificate, he wrote, Eric died by homicide in a hit and run crash. But months since the death, there hasn't been a single criminal charge filed in the case. Dover hasn't responded to our request for an interview. But we caught up with Chief Newsom. It is an ongoing investigation, and I'm not at liberty to discuss any of the details. Representative Trey Kelly had the same response. No, Why I'm, didn't you call 911 or ask I'm your, sorry, your Faith, friend to call 911? Again, uh, I did uh, alert law enforcement, and again, because you, you called of, the police sorry, chief Faith, at home. I'm a potential witness in an ongoing investigation. If protocols were broken, Brazier wants them brought to light. I'm not going to allow this to go on on my watch. I'll say whoever behind bars before I see this covered up.
We did receive a more detailed statement from Representative Kelly explaining he met Dover at the scene because the driver did not know what he hid. And when he saw a bicycle on the side of the road in the area of the crash, he called police, the police chief, to investigate. So, Faith, now you've heard from the Georgia State Patrol. That's a new update. Yeah, so the Georgia State Patrol investigated this. A spokesperson tells me their probe looked not only into the crash itself, but also what happened afterwards. Five months later, the DA now has the case file. And you can find our full investigation anytime on 11alive.com and the 11 Alive app. Faith does such a terrific job of reporting. It is a very interesting story. We'll have a lot more on this coming up with Faith uh, coming up at 9 o'clock. Well, your 11 Alive storm trackers have been busy tracking rain really for the past two weeks. We're well above average, well above what we should be this time of year. And the showers continue tonight across North Georgia. They've been mainly on the light side, but very widespread. Some moderate showers just north of Canton moving up towards uh, Fanning, Gilmer County. And then as we look to the south, you can see we had a line move through earlier. That kind of fell apart. So just a few light showers on the south side right now. But as we pull out further, you can see the, the this rain expands well to the west and is associated with this frontal boundary. Now the northern communities, northern towns starting to cool off behind the front, but we're still pretty warm out ahead of that front with those spring-like temperatures we had today. Uh, Rome is definitely seeing the rain here it is coming down a uh, pretty widespread across Floyd County in Canton and Cherokee County. Uh, Kimberly Morris posted this picture of her rain gauge and said she had gotten four inches of rain out of this and uh, noticed that the temperatures were starting to drop. She got up to 71 today and then temperatures started dropping pretty quickly as that frontal system passed. So we saw an abrupt change in temperatures overnight. Chris Holcomb and I were just talking about this a little bit earlier. He pointed out that there was a wind shift between 4 and 5 o'clock in the morning because until that time we were in the mid 50s pretty much all night and then look at that abrupt change up into the 60s as soon as we saw the wind shift out of the southeast to from the southwest they switched from southeast to southwest and look at how our temperatures warmed up radically and we made it up to 70 degrees today in Atlanta. We were at 73 in Rome, 73 in Canton, 75 in Athens and Macon by the way had a record today of 81 degrees 81 we're in February we're in winter sir didn't feel like it in many in many areas so it's still warm ahead of the front we're still running 16 degrees warmer than we were at this time yesterday in Athens but behind that front temperatures are starting to fall so we will see a little bit of a cool down overnight tonight more than last night so we're looking at those temperatures and getting down into the low 50s as we get into the middle of the night we'll have a chance for those showers as we head into the evening as well and then tomorrow yep it'll be a wet morning commute mainly just showers it'll be foggy too we'll have areas of dense fog in some spots and then we'll see the showers continue off and on throughout the day. Tomorrow won't be a complete soaker. There'll be breaks in the action throughout the day, but we will continue to have those scattered showers the next 24 hours. Areas of dense fog as you head out in the morning and then severe storms coming in overnight Wednesday night into Thursday morning. So as far as thunderstorms tonight, they'll just be the general variety, but the Storm Prediction Center putting us in that marginal risk for isolated severe storms for our Wednesday night and Thursday. And in far northwest Georgia, they have a better chance, a level two out of five. In Atlanta, we have a level one out of five, mainly damaging wind gusts and flood risk this time around. Uh, we do have a low chance to see an isolated tornado, but the best chance for damage will come from those gusty damaging winds. The ground is saturated, so it won't take much to see some trees topple. So in comes the rain overnight, just scattered shower variety in through the overnight as well and in through tomorrow during the day. And then overnight Wednesday night into Thursday as when we see that main front move through that'll bring in a chance for severe storms during the morning commute. This is 7 a.m. on Thursday. It continues into 9 a.m. 10 a.m. It could be a rather stormy start to the day on our Thursday with that possibility of severe storms. So on our Wednesday we'll see a 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms. 80% chance as we head into Thursday especially the first half of the day and then we dry down on Friday temperatures drop way back down again to below average temps. We should be below freezing on Saturday, but a nice, cool, crisp weekend ahead with rain returning next week.
Sam, thank you. Still to come, a mother in Metro Atlanta wants to know why only a certain type of infant gets medication that could keep them from getting RSV. We're verifying for you next. Speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. would wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Live's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. On it's a frightening situation for a parent. RSV is a respiratory virus that makes it very difficult for children to breathe. One viewer wanted to know why there's not more information about a medication that could potentially keep babies from getting sick. Liza Lucas verifies. My daughter Mabel was hospitalized in the ICU due to RSV for 10 days. We found out that there is an injection called Synergis that can prevent or lessen the severity of the RSV infection. When we asked to have the injection, we were all told that she doesn't qualify because she was born at 30 weeks instead of 29 weeks. According to the CDC, more than 57,000 kids under age five are hospitalized every year due to RSV. Cassie wants to know why some babies get this drug and others don't. First, we checked with the CDC. It says there's no vaccine to prevent RSV, but Pal Vizumab sold as Synergis may protect some babies. According to Dr. Mary Caserta, research has shown that the benefits of the drug to prevent RSV are limited, with little effect on total hospitalizations and no evidence that it saves lives. The AAP says the medication is more beneficial to high-risk infants, so its guidelines for the medication primarily include babies born before 29 weeks and infants with certain chronic illnesses or a compromised immune system. But what about cost? If not covered by insurance, Synergis runs around $1,600 per vial, according to the company. Each dose helps protect the child for about a month. Dr. Caserta verified cost is considered when deciding policy, but it's not the main reason for the AAP's guidelines. To recap, we verified there's still no vaccine for RSV. And when it comes to Synergis, the Academy says its guidelines are based on who stands to benefit. The Synergis website also indicates that even babies who get the medication can still get RSV. The Academy tells me it's committed to regularly reviewing the data and updating policy as necessary based on new information. Do you have something for us to verify? Send us your questions via Facebook, Twitter, or via email at verify at 11alive.com. 
he is facing suspension after trying to save a life because the fire department says what he did was against policy. Next, why he plans to fight the punishment. Good guys didn't oh, finish. Oh. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Right, right. About that. Well, reward would be... Slimming, Slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah, right? yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you know, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. Here, 11 Alive Storm Tracker still tracking the rain tonight, although it looks to be lightening up a bit right now. But we still have widespread showers across the northern part of our state. It's been coming down for a while, so the roads are pretty wet. They're still ponding on the roadways. Be careful if you're out there driving. And across the south side, we had a line of some pretty good showers earlier, but those are pretty much broken up. So just some light showers on the south side right now, but plenty of rain still out to our west, and that's heading in our direction as we head into the overnight hours. So as we take a look at uh, Rome, you can see the streets are wet. There's a lot of rain on the lens there. The winds are out of the southwest, and um, so we're seeing those gusty winds at times across Atlanta. The wind should have shifted, though, in Rome. It's behind the front right now, and we're going to continue to see those showers overnight. So we're looking at the next 12 hours, rain off and on, and we'll see plenty of fog to start tomorrow. So a foggy start with some of those showers around and temperatures not quite as warm as today, but getting close and we'll see the showers continue into the overnight and then storms possibly tomorrow night. So as far as tonight, the severe risk is pretty minimal. We just have a chance for general thunderstorms, but heading into tomorrow night, those severe chances will be ramping up and we'll have more on those threats and the timing of when the storms will be at their worst coming up in just a few minutes. All right, there has been an outpouring of support for an Atlanta firefighter, a captain now, facing suspension after trying to save a 95-year-old woman from a house fire. 
The fire department says that he shouldn't have uh, gone into the home by himself. They say he should have waited for a crew before going in to search. But the captain's attorney says he had two other firefighters with him. Owen Lopez spoke with the attorney today. The Atlanta Fire Union says Captain Daniel Dwyer can't speak to us directly because it's against department policy, but they are fighting the punishment on behalf of all firefighters. Attorney Lance LaRusso says his client is a 20-year veteran in the fire service, and he took a risk to save 95-year-old Sally Scrin last June. Atlanta Fire documents allege Captain Dwyer broke department policy when he entered the home. Video given to the fire union shows flames taking over the house after Captain Dwyer pulled the victim onto a porch. LaRusso says Dwyer went into the home to save her with two firefighters with hose support. And while Scrin didn't survive, LaRusso argues that without Dwyer's actions, she would have never had a chance. If she had been brought out and survived, I think this would have been looked at very differently. But, you know, she did not have a chance until he decided he was going to take a risk with two other firefighters with hose support to go in there and try to save someone. Captain Dwyer is appealing the four-day suspension without pay, which is supposed to start on Thursday. Atlanta Fire told us it would be inappropriate to discuss the case because it has not been totally resolved. Nearly 200 people here in Georgia are now self-monitoring themselves for symptoms of the coronavirus. After returning from China, these are not confirmed cases and the people are not showing any symptoms at this point. But it is one of the extra steps being taken to ensure the virus does not spread here in the United States. Meanwhile, another case has been confirmed in California. Here's NBC's Tracy Potts with the very latest. With more than a thousand now dead of coronavirus in China. This outbreak is, is spreading much more quickly than SARS did. The Centers for Disease Control reports 13 mild cases here in the U.S., including one just diagnosed in San Diego. And the U.S. situation is very different than what we're seeing in, in China. We do not have widespread transmission here in the United States. 195 people who were on the first flight out of Wuhan are expected to be released from quarantine today with no symptoms. And everyone within the cohort passed their health screening. I'm going to open the door and say hi to them real quick. But there are still Americans stuck on this cruise ship outside Japan where passengers have fallen sick. We take our temperatures a few times a day. President Trump in New Hampshire last night. I spoke with President Xi, and they're working very, very hard. And I think it's going to all work out fine. Rough stuff, I tell you, rough, rough stuff. Rough and costly. Lawmakers question why the administration is not asking for emergency funds while pitching a $35 million cut to the CDC. This is the fund current, currently being used to respond to the coronavirus outbreak. 300 scientists on a call today with the World Health Organization want to fast track tests, drugs and vaccines. There is still so much we don't know. And still so many waiting to be told they're not sick. Topping our speed feed tonight, a popular church in Decatur is parting ways with a local Baptist association. According to this Facebook post, the first Baptist church of Decatur was expelled from the Atlanta Metro Baptist Association. The post says the church was kicked out because, quote, we invite all people to participate into full participation in our faith community. The decision comes after some criticism regarding the Decatur church's openness to the LGBTQ community. A disturbing discovery at a UGA frat house. Someone left several dead animals on the Chai Sly fraternity's front porch. Police say a fraternity member found the animals along with several bloody latex gloves at the scene. Now, officers are searching for the person responsible. However, they suspect it may have been a prank committed by another campus fraternity. The Hawks don't have too many wins, but fans, they certainly love going to the games. A new survey ranks the Hawks and State Farm Arena as the league's top venue for overall game experience. Thousands of ticket holders league-wide were polled. They voted on key factors, including arena ushers, in-game entertainment, technology, and more. This is the second year in a row the Hawks snagged the number one spot. Braves fans know all about the freeze. He's a lot of fun to watch during the summer, always entertaining. And you will be happy to know he already is in midseason form, but not just for the races on the warning track at Truist Park. The freeze, whose real name is Nigel Talton, is training for a chance to compete in the Olympics in Tokyo this summer. Let's hope it works out for him. As Alex Glaze tells us, the Braves helped him realize that he could make a dream a reality. 
You know the freeze, but the man wearing the freeze costume has dreams that extend far beyond racing on the warning track of Truist Park. I'm just enjoying his journey. The journey Nigel Talton is on will take him to Albuquerque, New Mexico for U.S. Indoor Nationals and will hopefully lead to Tokyo this summer for the Olympics. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but the group I train with, the coach I got, the support I got, um, it's just about getting rest, training, so... I'm just excited to get outdoor started. Getting to the Olympics has been a longtime goal for the 29-year-old sprinter. But in 2016, his dream got sidelined when he tore his hamstring two weeks before Olympic trials. I thought it was like it was over. I wanted to quit track. But then the Braves created the freeze and coincidentally breathed new life into Nigel's love for sprinting. Push, push, push. He's working with Olympic gold medalist Dwight Phillips and has seen major improvements in a short period of time. My time dropped last week, so I qualified for nationals again. So last time I went to indoor nationals was 2013 when I was at Kennesaw State. His goals are clear, but he also realizes he won't be defined by the results at track meets. His journey doesn't end there. If it's meant to be, if God want me to make that team, I'll make that team. If not, if you want me to continue to inspire other kids or other people not to give up on their dreams, I'm, I'm down with it. Democratic presidential candidates are in New Hampshire for the country's first primary, a state that is always unpredictable. But there are a few key developments to watch. I'm Francesca Amaker with the AC, and I've got my hands on the new teaser for Aretha Franklin's new docu-series that's shooting right here in Atlanta. It's coming up in the AC. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crock Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. We vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive, amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. <laughs>
watching results roll in tonight from New Hampshire. It's the first presidential primary of 2020, and already there have been some interesting moments in New Hampshire, including uh, now the Democrat uh, Andrew Yang and Colorado Senator Michael Bennett suspending their campaigns. Bennett, less of a factor, less of someone who really corrals a lot of national attention. But Yang, Yang's gotten a lot of attention. You know, people have really paid attention to some of his ideas whether you like them or not, they certainly have stirred the pot a bit in this campaign. The small town of Dixville Notch has a tradition of casting ballots at the stroke of midnight. We all know this. Of the five votes cast, three wrote in Michael Bloomberg's name, but it is Senator Bernie Sanders who has already passed the threshold to win all of the state's delegates. Former Vice President Joe Biden didn't even stick around to see the results in New Hampshire. He's off to South Carolina where he hopes that he will be able to bring in uh, African-American votes there. And he certainly is, uh, it's time for him to show. Otherwise, there are going to be a lot of whispers about his campaign. I think that's already happening. Some might be wondering why such a small state gets to hold the country's first primary, particularly since it has been a springboard uh, as the race shifts into high gear. Let's connect the dots for you. We know voters in Iowa already had their say, but that's a caucus. New Hampshire is the first primary in the country, and it's been that way since 1920, and not really by design. It's just how the dates shook out. By the 1950s, the state was getting a lot of attention by being first. By the 70s, the state had passed a law that said it had to be first by a week, and it elected a secretary of state, Bill Gardner, who made it his life's mission to keep New Hampshire's prominent primary spot. In fact, he still holds the position today. He's also fought off big wigs from both parties who have tried to change the date. So while the rest of the country questions why such a small state with so few minorities gets to go first, voters in New Hampshire will continue to head to the polls before the rest of us. Yes, another rainy day as the rain continues to move in. We're going to stay unsettled and wet until Thursday afternoon, and then we'll get a little bit of a break in this wet weather. Uh, our 11 Alive Storm trackers have been keeping us updated on the rain across North Georgia. Now it's just turning into more widespread showers, not as many heavy downpours showing up on the radar. Also across South Georgia, I should say the South Metro uh, towards Middle Georgia, we saw some really good downpours earlier, but those kind of dissipated. So we're just seeing some light showers out there right now, drizzle being reported in Noonan. And this rain does extend well back into Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Texas. And this frontal system is gonna kind of be stubborn to leave. It's going to meander around, keeping us unsettled until Thursday afternoon after that next front kicks it on out of here and dries us out for a while. Looking out at Noonan, they're reporting drizzle at this hour. Their winds are fairly light, but when that line came through, they had some heavy rain for a while, as did Thomaston. Kelly Herring, one of our 11 Alive storm trackers, capturing the ominous looking clouds as that line rolled through this evening with those very dark, dark uh, bases to the cloud. It did look very dark and, and gloomy there during the evening commute. So uh, temperature have been radically changed. I mean, remember we had snow on Saturday morning and we had freezing temperatures on the backside of that. And now we're up to 70 degrees today. 70 or high after a morning low of 54, well above the average of 56 and 37. That's how we should be looking this time of year. Picked up just a third of an inch of rain today and that puts us at a, a surplus for the year so far of six and three quarters inches. So we're looking at temperatures still very very warm for this time of night, 66 in Athens, 68 in Eatonton, 62 in Atlanta. Temperatures will be cooling as that little cooler air mass. This is a weak front. This isn't the main front that's moving through tonight, so no huge drop in temperature, but maybe a little bit cooler as we head into uh, tonight than it was last night. But we're looking at the chance for showers as we head in towards midnight and then off and on as we get into that morning commute. Fog to start tomorrow. We do think we'll have some areas of fog as you head out early and then heading towards lunch hour. Yes, we'll have the chance for off and on showers throughout the day and then overnight tomorrow night is when we could likely see some stronger storms. So scattered showers off and on the next 24 hours 
areas of dense morning fog tomorrow morning and then severe storms Wednesday night into Thursday and the Storm Prediction Center giving us about a level one out of five levels. So that means isolated severe thunderstorms possible with gusty damaging winds. Can't rule out an isolated tornado, but that flood risk is probably still going to be our major risk here as we head into that Thursday morning. So wind and rain are the major risks, but we can't rule out an isolated tornado or two. So we'll watch for that. So showers overnight tonight. We'll see them continue off and on throughout tomorrow and through the afternoon commute as well. And it really doesn't get heavy into the overnight hours and early on Thursday. Look at this 530 in the morning, 730 in the morning, 930 in the morning. That's when we will have the risk for severe weather. So as far as your seven day forecast, 50% chance of rain, mainly showers off and on with an isolated thunderstorm tomorrow. On Thursday morning, that's a much better chance of seeing some strong thunderstorms as that line moves through. We dry out behind that front. It cools off. We see temperatures below freezing on Saturday morning, but a cool, crisp weekend ahead with a couple of nines on the wasometer, and it looks like we get a dry break until next week. All right, folks, you know what time it is. You see our screen. It is time for a Tuesday's edition of the A scene, and we are kicking off with a newly dropped trailer from the new docuseries out by National Geographic. Guess what? Check out the new teaser from their genuous docuseries, which chronicles the life of the Aretha Franklin. What kind of music do you really want to make, Miss Franklin? I want to make hits, Mr. Wexler. You do not want to miss Academy Award nominee Cynthia Erivo as Aretha Franklin in the third season of the critically acclaimed global anthology series titled Genius Aretha. Now, in the teaser, we see the legend face the stage, even get into a domestic dispute. And keep in mind, they have been filming this docuseries in Atlanta for quite some time now, and this series is definitely going to be revealing a lot about the lead singer. It premieres May 25th on Nat Geo. And catch a casting. It's time for a casting call. This is for a new TV show. And it's a big deal because it's director selected role. So do you have a hairy chest? Well, they want you. <laughs> Casting directors are looking for a male 18 or up who portrays a, a white man, appears to be between 20 and 30 years old, specifically looking for someone with a fit build and like I said, that hairy chest. So you will be wearing a sleeveless shirt in this scene, so no visible tattoos. You must have zero facial hair and be available to film on Monday the 24th in Fairburn. All details to this hairy chest casting call on our A scene Facebook page. Whatever I've, I've it got, takes. I've got some of those elements there. I, not all of them, some of them. Well, how about this one? Coming up, a story so many of you have loved on our 11 Alive Facebook page, how one woman became the Navy's first African-American female pilot to earn her wings. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together our voices grow. Together we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. didn't wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive.
Atlanta. Almost six million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Live's Chesley McNeil. I'm gonna give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs. She was the Navy's first African-American female pilot to earn her wings. And her story has fascinated so many of you on our 11 Live Facebook page. So we wanted to share how Brenda Robinson is teaching the next generation all about what it takes to fly. Here's Ruby Durham with our sister station in Charlotte. When Brenda Robinson was growing up in the 50s outside Philadelphia, physically flying a plane wasn't a thought of mind. She thought being a woman in aeronautics meant being a flight attendant. But thanks to a career study program at her high school, she was able to broaden her view of aviation. When I got to go to an air traffic control tower, I stepped onto the tower, I looked around, and I said, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. After high school, Robinson enrolled at Dowling College in New York, one of the best aviation schools on the East Coast. She eventually became the first black woman in Dowling's history to graduate with a degree in aeronautics and also earned a private pilot's license. And boom, I, you know, I just went for the stars after that. Robinson then went on to join the U.S. Navy in 1977, one year after women were authorized to attend the Naval Academy. They were selecting 10 women a year out of the nation, and I was one of those 10. In 1980, she became the first African-American female pilot in the U.S. Navy to earn her wings. But it wasn't easy. No matter what she accomplished, Robinson always felt she had to prove she was qualified, especially as an African-American woman. Since I didn't look like the model in the norm, then the thought that maybe I already know is not given to me. I have to earn it every time. And that she did. In fact, her work ethic led her to achieve the rank of lieutenant commander as a Navy pilot. She successfully completed 155 aircraft carrier landings and flew seven types of aircraft, touching the skies from the East Coast to Guam, Germany, the Middle East, and Italy. She was a Navy pilot for 30 years before becoming one of the first African-American female pilots for American Airlines, a position she held for 17 years until she retired in 2008. Today, she calls Charlotte home and serves as an instructor at Flight Ride in Concord. She's also the founder of Aviation Camps of the Carolinas, where she teaches and offers teenagers hands-on opportunities to learn about aviation at airports around the nation. You know, the world is, you know, uh, as they see it, and it's very finite until you press their button. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta, from movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh. did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm -hmm. Stop. I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah. I've like got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess? I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, 
live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Right, right. About that. Reward would be slimming, slimming down. Okay, yes. right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Blog, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Blog on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of yeah. All right, a Georgia Tech graduate now is getting questions about the Super Bowl, not because he played for the Chiefs or the 49ers, but because she was part of the halftime show. That is the show we're talking about. Rayanna Brown danced alongside Shakira. About 102 million viewers watch that moment. The 2017 tech graduate lives here in Atlanta. She's a full-time engineer well, consultant cool. for a mm. software development firm and even runs her own dance company. Even dealing with all that, she was able to find some time to audition and to rehearse driving back and forth between Atlanta and Miami. Mm. I actually wasn't that nervous, which is kind of weird. Normally I get really nervous, but I felt very peaceful and excited. And I was mostly excited for my family because they were really excited that I was dancing in the Super Bowl. I bet they were where she says she learned a lot about managing her time and balancing a career in dance while she was at Georgia Tech. Well, that's great. I mean, what a story to be telling the rest of your I life. Know. I know. I, I never talk about it much, but I was with Prince in Miami. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, oh, really? I don't talk about it. I, yeah. you know, no video, social media, then. New, news, so humble. News is king yeah. here. I'm right. not right. It is. I don't want to talk about it. Believe music. it or not, a lot of big artists like Beyonce pull artists from Atlanta. Oh, this is the really? new hub to pull those artists from. Oh. It's not LA and New York. We're getting in the running for that. Yeah, we'll be there. Yeah, there you we go. will. And we'll be with, you know, background too. We'll Prince. see you there. Yeah, wow. I, I, know, I know it's great. <laughs> I, I don't want to talk about it. Though. And then you then you woke up and came to work, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Humble man, <laughs> humble man. Hey, it's almost nine o'clock. We have a lot coming up on 11 Alive News Prime Time with concerns about protecting your privacy at the polls. We look at whether one metro county has made an expensive mistake. And he pulled his sister through a window to save her from a fire, but it didn't stop there. How a brave five-year-old saved seven lives. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. All right, right now we're enjoying this break from the rain, of course, but don't put those umbrellas away just yet. It is going to be short-lived. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb tracking some changes heading our way. Hey, Chris. Yeah, we're watching a system that's moving our way that um, not only has more rain that'll be coming in, but also the potential for storms that'll be moving our way. Uh, this phone right here is up here because I'm doing a Facebook Live as well. I'm getting a lot of comments from folks uh, like Mandy Dotson says, summer's coming, right? Um, Ronnie Hubbard says, hello, please get rid of the rain. And a lot of folks are saying hello as well. Uh, you know, a lot of folks are kind of uh, getting frustrated with how much rain that we've been dealing with lately and we're ready to dry out. But we're going to still have to wait a little while before that happens. Here's what we're watching right now. We had a really good coverage of rain over in Alabama and in Metro Atlanta a little bit earlier. But as that moves to the north and east, notice how that's shrinking up and falling apart. It's mainly light rain now. Uh, down to the south, uh, down to, uh, south of I-20, we do have just a little bit of uh, no rain right now and we have some breaks in that action coming in as well. Let me grab my clicker here and we'll zoom on out and you can see that a lot of this rain back in Alabama is also falling apart. So just know overnight there will be a few just spotty showers around but nothing particularly heavy and nothing really particularly widespread. Here's what we're going to be watching as we go through the rest of the nighttime hours. This is as we get into Wednesday night 
into Thursday. Now, not tonight. This is Wednesday night into Thursday. The next system that's been pushing our way will have the potential for some stronger storms. Uh, later on overnight Wednesday into early on Thursday, we're going to be at a level one risk category. That's one out of five, a marginal risk, meaning a chance for some isolated stronger storms. And then the yellow color in northwest Georgia indicates that level two risk for storms that'll move in. That stretches back through Alabama, Mississippi, and even into parts of Louisiana. The main threats we'll be dealing with damaging wind gusts, maybe some isolated tornadoes, and then flash flooding is going to be the bigger threat that we're going to be talking about. Stay with us. We're going to put a timeline on that and show you the best chance for seeing those storms and when they're going to move out. More on that in just a few minutes. All right, Chris, we'll see you in a couple of minutes, sir. Tonight, there is major concern over coronavirus. It's hitting close to home. Around 200 people here in Georgia are self-monitoring themselves for symptoms of the coronavirus. After getting back from China, we want to emphasize these are not confirmed cases and the people are not showing symptoms at this time. Coronavirus has put a target on Asians worldwide who don't have it. Mm. Tonight, they're sharing examples of coronavirus-related discrimination on social media. 11 Alive's Chinu Her has been uh, going through some of those pictures and video. What are you learning, Chinu? Well, yeah, they're all over the Internet right now. Asian people all over the world are calling this type of harassment a form of racism. Their posts show others harassing them and accusing them of having the virus. Hi, I'm, I'm so sorry, but I think that was a very racist comment. Yeah? Yeah. Wow, great. What did you say? I said you dropped your coronavirus. Yeah, because um, you, can't, you can't just look at me and assume I, I am can't? Chinese. Yeah, Instagram exactly. user Ingrid Chan from Canada posted this video online saying a man told her mother and sister they dropped their coronavirus. When Chan's sister confronted the man, he got defensive. I Sorry, never no. even met. What I've said it about? to 10 different people. This incident is now just one of many posted on the Internet from this tweet in Spain saying hashtag I am not a virus in different languages to this tweet in Rome showing a bar forbidding people from China to enter. In Los Angeles, this woman posted a video on Facebook. She told NBC News she became concerned when she realized this man was talking about the coronavirus. She tells NBC News she didn't report it to police, but wanted to spread awareness and stop the sensationalizing about the virus from others. Now, local nonprofit, the Center for Pan-Asian Community Services, says with all of this, it's important to remain focused on the facts of the virus and not let fear dictate how we treat others. All right, thanks, Chinu. Very eye-opening there. So there are a few major headlines coming right now from the New Hampshire presidential primary. Let's kick it off with the results. NBC News projects that Senator Bernie Sanders, Senator Amy Klobuchar, and former Mayor Pete Buttigieg finish in the top three. Sanders was leading, but second and third place has not been determined. Sanders reached a threshold to win all of the state's delegates. The other big headline was candidate Andrew Yang announcing that he was dropping out of the Democratic race. Initially seen as a long shot, he's most known for his campaign promise to give Americans $1,000 every month. Colorado Senator Michael Bennett also decided to suspend his campaign. Well, a two and a half million dollar security enhancement could actually make Fulton County voting machines less secure. That's the warning from a tech expert who says that hackers could actually tap into uh, next month's primary election. 11 Alive's Doug Richards explains. This is our two station vote center. Fulton County is buying 800 of these metal cabinets which will hold many of the new voting machines the state is delivering for use in next month's presidential primary. You can move the wings. Fulton Elections Director Rick Barron showed them to us last week. He says the cabinets will save space and give voters more privacy when they use the state's new ballot marking system. Move it to whatever's comfortable for them. You know those problems. But Rich DeMillo says they're too private, especially if the voter is actually a hacker. It looks like you can get access to the back panel of a touchscreen. Uh, and, and once you have access to the back panel of a touchscreen, you can insert software and do all kinds of things that you would do to a computer to, to mess it up. Dr. DeMillo is a tech expert, the retired dean of computing at Georgia Tech and former chief technology officer at Hewlett Packard. 
Most counties are expected to put the large, bright touchscreen voting computers on tabletops in plain sight of poll workers and observers. But Fulton County's cabinet, DeMillo says, would conceal the hands of possible hackers. That would take seconds. It would be largely undetectable, I think. Barron told us last week he took tampering into consideration when Fulton County spent two and a half million dollars for the cabinet and says a hacker would likely draw the attention of poll workers. With these, because people are, are concerned with tampering, they, you don't want to completely conceal the electronic equipment so that no one can see what's happening inside. They're um, not very secure. Fulton County bought the cabinets in part to keep the voting systems secure from thieves who might break into polling places. Fulton County expects to use a portion of them in next month's presidential primary. They hope to roll out the rest of them for another primary in May. This reeks of the good old boy system. Tonight, growing outrage after an explosive reveal investigation. It's about the duty to report a crime and help a victim and whether two local leaders did enough. 11 Lives Faith Abube found neither Cedar Town's police chief nor a state representative called 911 as a hit and run victim lay dying in a ditch. Almost 150,000 readers and counting and a social media firestorm step down now that's the message from community members and some state officials they're reacting to a reveal investigation into cedar town police chief jamie newsom and state representative trey kelly why didn't you call 911 um, i think that the majority whip trey kelly needs to be called on by all to immediately resign that's georgia state representative renita shannon on the phone after learning of her colleague's role in the aftermath of a deadly hit and run crash in cedar town the driver, Ralph Dover, drove about a mile from the scene after hitting Eric Keyes on his bike. When he stopped, he didn't call police. He did not call 911. He called his friend, Georgia House Majority Whip Trey Kelly. Representative Kelly, who is also an attorney, did not call 911 either. While Eric laid in the ditch dying, Kelly called police chief Jamie Newsom at home. Anybody who's lacking the moral courage to place what may be good for your friend over potentially saving a person's life has no business in the Georgia General Assembly. The chief also did not call 911 that night. He called his sergeant to call him on the phone. By the time the officer got to the scene, it was too late. Eric died about 45 minutes later. The family's attorney says they've been watching the reaction to the reveal investigation. It's been extremely uh, comforting and supporting to the family and us. Uh, to know that people are on the side of the justice, they're on the side of the truth. Attorney Min Koo says the family is also appreciative of Jack Browning, the Polk County DA. Within hours of releasing our investigation, he released a statement saying, quote, our office has already begun the process of reviewing the investigation to determine what and who will be charged for the incident that resulted in Mr. Key's tragic death. I anticipate bringing those charges to a Polk County grand jury soon in the coming weeks. Ku says days earlier, the DA told her that wouldn't happen until summer 2020. Be that as it may, uh, we're extremely appreciative that the DA has worked expeditiously to move this case along. Ku says she believes this was an attempt at a cover-up and justice won't be served until all involved are held accountable not just the driver. It's clear that the protocols were blatantly disregarded and common sense was ignored. Instead, deliberate and intentional actions were taken to cover up a crime. And the family says they plan to sue the city of Cedartown, the police chief Dover, and the House Majority Whip in the coming weeks. Faith, since you released your investigation, you've gotten a second statement from Representative Kelly, and this one's a lot more detailed. Yeah, he says he got so many messages after our story that he felt he had to share his side. He said he got a call that night from a Polk County citizen that he had seen at the fair. He didn't mention, though, in that statement that this person, that driver, was a friend of his. We even found a picture of the two of them together from years ago at the state capitol. Something that stuck out to me in that statement, Faith, he said this individual worked at a local supermarket, said he's well-liked and is known to have limited mental capacity. 
They, he said he was really agitated and upset. Yeah, and we heard a lot of things about um, Dover's mental capacity as well, right? His parents told us that. But we also know he holds a job, he lived by himself before, and he has a driver's license. Eric's family doesn't think that's enough of a defense to not call 911 for a dying man. There's so much to the story. I know you'll have a lot more coming up tonight, up late at 11. You can also see more on 11alive.com. Faith, All right. thanks a lot. All right, thanks, ladies. Straight ahead, two people accused of killing a Clark Atlanta student plead not guilty and declined to hear their charges read in court. We're asking our legal expert how this plays into the defense team's strategy. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb is live on Facebook right now, taking your weather questions about this next wet system heading our way with some storms included. You can join the conversation right now on his Facebook page. We're going to catch up with him right after the break. And don't forget, we're streaming right now on our 11 Alive YouTube channel. Subscribe and join the conversation in the community section. We've got more 11 Alive news prime time after the break. Every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. No. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what? Two people accused of killing 21-year-old college student Alexis Crawford refused to hear their charges read aloud today in court or on Monday, and both entered not guilty pleas. Now, we've been following this case really closely ever since Crawford's body was found in November. 11 Alive Jennifer Bellamy spoke with our legal analyst, Latonya Hines, to find out what this strategy means for this case. Well, both Crawford's roommates, Jordan Jones and Jones's boyfriend, Baron Brantley, pleaded not guilty in Crawford's murder yesterday. They are accused of suffocating Crawford and dumping her body in a park. They were both supposed to be in court for what's called an arraignment hearing, where a judge reads the charges against them out loud and then they enter a plea. Our legal analyst, Latonia Hines, says those are usually procedural hearings and it's actually common to waive them. Because it is very rare you're going to see a, a defendant, a criminal defendant in a felony case, especially murder, go and say, I plead guilty today. Um, before there's been discovery or anything, because a defense attorney of uh, their true salt is going to have to do um, actual discovery and have to investigate the case first. A not guilty plea is also pretty common for criminal defendants at this level, because right now prosecutors are still working on building their case. Hines says Brantley or Jones could reach a different plea deal later on. She also says each side will now start putting their cases together and through entering evidence and deciding which witnesses to call, they will decide if they're going to take this case all the way to trial. We'll, of course, be following this case through all of that. So be sure to follow our coverage on air and online. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers, and I'm on live right now on Facebook Live on my Facebook page. Chris Holcomb 11 Alive is the page. If you want to join us there, it's fine. I'm about to show some of the behind the scenes looks here. Um, we have um, a lot of folks who are leaving comments right now. Um, uh, Tiffany Hughes says, any chance for tornadoes Wednesday night? So that is the next system that's moving in that will give us not only rain overnight Wednesday into early on Thursday, but it's also going to be a system that will have the potential for severe weather. Uh, the risk for tornadoes is low, 
but it's also not zero. It's going to be on the low end. Maybe a brief spin up tornado is possible in some isolated areas, but that's not the main part that we're going to be watching with that system. That risk for that tornado risk is on the low end. Here's what we're watching right now. Uh, drying out a little bit in Atlanta. We still have clouds around. Uh, we had some showers that came through a little bit earlier, but that's tapering off. And this big shield of rain that we were watching coming in from Alabama is beginning to also taper off a little bit. You see that over North Georgia. I'll put this into live mode and you can just see just some of the light rain that is around. But as we widen out a little bit more, there is a little more moisture back into Birmingham, but it is also falling apart. So I just want you to know that tonight while you're trying to sleep, there may be just a few spotty light showers around, but it's not going to be particularly anything heavy or anything strong, and I really don't expect any thunder or lightning anything tonight. Tomorrow night is going to be a little different story, all right? So let me show you what we're watching out there right now. As um, you can see here, that risk for tomorrow night. Now, this is, again, Wednesday night into early on Thursday morning. You see the green color over Atlanta? That is where we have that level one risk. It's called the marginal risk, level one of five for the potential for stronger storms. Some of those could turn severe. And then the yellow color here is the level two risk where there's a little better chance for some stronger storms. And that goes back into Alabama, Mississippi, and also into Louisiana. Here are the main threats that we're going to be watching as the system comes in. Again, Wednesday night into Thursday. The threat for some strong winds is on the medium scale as well as heavy rain. Uh, and then the tornado risk is on the low end, and we're really not concerned about any hail with this system that is coming in. So on the bottom of your screen, you see this. This is a QR code. I want you to open up your smartphone phone and the camera app there and point that camera at that QR code, and it will help you to download our 11 Alive app. And that way you can track any rain that's out there and specifically tomorrow night, any storms that come in. And you can uh, enable alerts for that and it will alert you if any warnings are issued. So tonight, just generally some light showers. I'm really thinking the first part of the day tomorrow, we're going to have a, a break in the rain with just mostly cloudy skies that we'll see in our area for a few hours tomorrow. Then at lunchtime, a few showers up in North Georgia, but not much here in Metro Atlanta. And then late afternoon into the evening, we begin to see a few more scattered showers that will begin to develop, but still no storms here yet. Here comes that line of storms. This is really early, early Thursday morning, about three, four in the morning, coming into Northwest Georgia. We'll watch this line continue to move through at seven in the morning. It's this line that has that potential for some damaging winds, maybe an isolated tornado. By nine o'clock, it's pretty much moving east of Atlanta. And then by lunchtime on Thursday, it's gone. And then we begin the drying out process for late Thursday and into Friday. So Wednesday is still going to be a really warm day, 70 degrees for a high temperature uh, with those rain chances out there at 50% later in the day, and then Thursday, the showers and storms early, then they clear out, will be mostly sunny Friday and Saturday and cooler, a high of 51 Friday, Saturday morning below freezing at 30 with a high of 52, back to 58 Sunday, and then lower rain chances for Monday and Tuesday at 20 to 30 percent with those temperatures warming back up though into the 60s. A family of eight in Kingston, Georgia, narrowly escapes a house fire thanks to a brave five year old. He had burns on his hands, but still stepped in and saved his family. Check out little Noah here with singed hair and burns on his fingers, still giving us that cute little smile. The fire chief says Noah woke up to the fire and immediately jumped into action. The only way out was through a window. So Noah grabbed his two year old sister and they got out of there. They ran to a nearby relative's home who alerted the rest of the family, saving seven people in all. The chief says the fact that Noah did all of this and is only five is pretty remarkable. In doing that, he received some minor burns to his arm and his hands, of course, singed hair, and his two-year-old sister received some burns to her feet. But because of his quick actions, he also alerted the rest of the family members, so a total of eight family members were able to get out of the house with only minor injuries and smoke inhalation. The fire chief says the fire started from an overloaded, overloaded socket there. He also says there weren't any working smoke detectors, something they always, always encourage. On Friday, the fire department plans to honor little Noah with a life-saving award with a ceremony afterwards. You can find out more about that. Just head to 11alive.com. That is outstanding. All right, coming up, local law students taking a, a pass on partying in favor of helping those fighting to stay in the country. The life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions, and who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. 
Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app. All right, when you think of college spring break destinations, mm. Lumpkin, Georgia, yeah, it's probably not in that list. Yeah, that's right. So instead of planning a trip to the beach, some uh, Georgia State law students are going to Lumpkin to help some immigrants who are being detained there. 11 Alive's Ellen Lopez spoke with the students today. In the southeast, only one in six immigrants in detention have access to an attorney, and you're 10 times more likely to succeed in your case if you do. Having an attorney can often mean the difference between winning or losing your case. But an immigrant, whether detained or not, does not have the right to government-appointed counsel. You can imagine navigating, even doing your taxes is tough enough, but navigating uh, the immigration system from detention without an attorney is kind of an insurmountable task for people. You have to gather documents and evidence oftentimes from the you know, country of origin. This year, eight GSU law students will tackle that task with the help of attorneys from the Southern Poverty Law Center. There's kind of nothing more dramatic than seeing people who have come to this country for a better life in detention. So for the students to see that, I think really drives home the value of a legal education and what they can do with their degree. For the first time this year, they are adding Irwin Detention Center in Asilla, Georgia to the list. Every year that we've done the trip, there's been more demand by, from students than we've had capacity to fill, so that's why we expanded to two trips. Alex Estroff went to Stewart Detention Center where he conducted interviews with detainees and did legal research pro bono. We were able to hear their stories and uh, learn about them and their families, um, which is something that most people don't get the chance to do. That's where Gabriela Batista Vargas will be going this year. And as the daughter of immigrants, it's a cause that's important to her. I know how difficult it is in the immigration system right now, you know, not having legal representation and uh, maybe feeling just stuck. So I wanted to be that person to provide any legal resources, be there in whatever capacity that I can as a student. You know, we should also point out it could take years for someone's case to be fully resolved in the SPLC. Attorney will continue to work on the immigrant's case after the student's week is over. But in some cases, the student can choose to remain involved. Well, he's facing suspension after trying to save a life because the fire department says what he did was against policy. Next, why he plans to fight the punishment. And more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all hydrated and everything else. It's not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. 
Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. <laughs> It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. <laughs> News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel is good vibes. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun, you know. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers, and we continue to watch this area of rain over North Georgia that's generally light rain falling apart. See this? Over the past few hours, we had a good coverage of rain back into Alabama, moving into northwest Georgia, and it's just kind of running out of moisture. We just have a little bit of that left over, mainly in the form of light rain over North Georgia and areas of the northern parts of Cherokee County, Pickens County, into Gilmer County, also southern Fannin County, Lumpkin County, White County, Northern Hall. Still seeing a few of those lighter showers. As we move down here closer to Atlanta, most places are dry. There may be just a little bit of mist and drizzle still around in some spots with this mostly cloudy sky, but things tapering off a good bit. And we're also seeing this back into Alabama, that moisture here. That is also falling apart tonight. So take a live look out there right now, and you can see what we're watching uh, over uh, our live camera here. This is in Noonan. This is our tower cam. As you can see, even though we don't have any active rain right now in Noonan, the roads are still wet. So it's still a damp night out there, even though we don't have any active precip coming down. So just be aware of that as you're going to be out and about late this evening and during the overnight hours. So here's a look at our forecast track for those overnight hours. We're really not seeing anything major coming in. Just know that most of us will stay dry, but with that cloud cover that we have and some of that moisture that is still around, just don't be surprised if there's some mist and drizzle mixed in. Your drive into work tomorrow, most likely the roads might be a little damp, but I'm not thinking we'll see any active rain. It's going to be later in the day on Wednesday, especially overnight Wednesday into early Thursday when we have the potential for storms. And yes, some of those could be strong. We're going to break down those chances for you coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. You know, police are looking for an inmate. They say escape through a ceiling light from the Harrison County uh, Detention Center. This is what we know. Gregory Wyatt made his escape last night and has not been seen since. Authorities say the 34 year old man went through a light in the ceiling, then kind of worked his way into a pipe. He eventually made it out of the north side of the building. If you see him, call police immediately.
All right, so the idea is to prepare students for the worst case scenario and hopefully save lives if there's ever a gunman on campus. But now, two national teacher unions are saying some active shooter drills are ineffective and could traumatize students. The report released today recommends not including students in the drills and offers guidelines if districts want to include kids. Joe Henke walks us through the report. The report on the impact of school safety drills for active shootings comes from the American Federation of Teachers, National Educators Association, and the organization Every Town for Gun Safety. They found in 2005, 40% of American public schools held lockdown drills to be prepared if there is a shooting. 95% did in 2015. In Fulton County Schools, the head of safety and security says the district conducts active shooter drills as part of a larger safety plan. Although active shooters, the active shooter scenario will have the greatest adverse impact, statistically, our greatest concern is weather. Dr. Shannon Flunori says the district's plan comes after talking with and collaborating with districts across the country to create responsible drills. The report released today points to an unannounced code red drill at a Florida high school in 2018, leading to chaos and panic attacks with students believing it was not a drill at all, but a real threat on campus. Fulton says it avoids such a scenario by not having unannounced drills. We don't want to have the unintended consequences of um, unintentionally putting them in a position where their fear of this event overtakes them to the point that it has a psychological impact or a negative psychological impact upon them. Today's report recommends districts carefully consider drills and if they include students and teachers, they should not mimic an actual incident. It also states parents, students and teachers should have advance notice and the drills should be tailored to the student's age and include input from school mental health professionals. Children that are under five, six, seven years old live in the world of fantasy and magic. Psychotherapist Eddie Reese says for the youngest students, realistic drills can lead to serious fears and even teens can be impacted. He suggests parents talking with their children afterwards. They go, yeah, it was all right and it doesn't really bother them fine. Uh, but there are children that can be really scared, really imagine that it's going to happen. Reese says a shooter drill, if realistic and unannounced, can have a physical and mental impact on you, similar to a close call while driving on the highway. Fulton County Schools tells us they do carry out very realistic drills, but those are only for the district's police officers training with no students involved. You know, there's been an outpouring of support for an Atlanta fire captain facing suspension after trying to save a 95-year-old woman from a house fire. But well, the fire department says he should have waited for his crew before going into the home to search for the victim. But the captain's attorney says he had two other firefighters with him at the time. 11 Alive's Elwin Lopez spoke with that attorney today. The Atlanta Fire Union says Captain Daniel Dwyer can't speak to us directly because it's against department policy, but they are fighting the punishment on behalf of all firefighters. Attorney Lance LaRusso says his client is a 20-year veteran in the fire service, and he took a risk to save 95-year-old Sally Scrin last June. Atlanta Fire documents allege Captain Dwyer broke department policy when he entered the home. Video given to the fire union shows flames taking over the house after Captain Dwyer pulled the victim onto a porch. LaRusso says Dwyer went into the home to save her with two firefighters with hose support. And while Scrin didn't survive, LaRusso argues that without Dwyer's actions, she would have never had a chance. If she had been brought out and survived, I think this would have been looked at very differently. But, you know, she did not have a chance until he decided he was going to take a risk with two other firefighters with hose support to go in there and try to save someone. Captain Dwyer is appealing the four-day suspension without pay, which is supposed to start on Thursday. Atlanta Fire told us it would be inappropriate to discuss the case because it has not been totally resolved. Nearly 200 people here in Georgia are self-monitoring themselves for symptoms of the coronavirus after returning from China. These are not confirmed cases. Let's be clear about that. And the people, they're not showing any symptoms at this point, but it's one of the extra steps being taken to ensure the virus does not spread here in the U.S. Meanwhile, another case has just been confirmed in California. NBC's Tracy Potts has the story. With more than a thousand now dead of coronavirus in China, this outbreak is, is spreading much more quickly than SARS did. The Centers for Disease Control reports 13 mild cases here in the U.S., including one just diagnosed in San Diego. And the U.S. situation is 
very different than what we're seeing in, in China. We do not have widespread transmission here in the United States. 195 people who were on the first flight out of Wuhan are expected to be released from quarantine today with no symptoms. And everyone within the cohort passed their health screening. I'm going to open the door and say hi to them real quick. But there are still Americans stuck on this cruise ship outside Japan where passengers have fallen sick. We take our temperatures a few times a day. President Trump in New Hampshire last night. I spoke with President Xi, and they're working very, very hard. And I think it's going to all work out fine. Rough stuff, I tell you, rough, rough stuff. Rough and costly. Lawmakers question why the administration is not asking for emergency funds while pitching a $35 million cut to the CDC. This is the fund current, currently being used to respond to the coronavirus outbreak. 300 scientists on a call today with the World Health Organization want to fast track tests, drugs, and vaccines. There is still so much we don't know. And still so many waiting to be told they're not sick. All right, topping our speed feed tonight, a popular church in Decatur is now parting ways with a local Baptist association. According to his Facebook post, the First Baptist Church of Decatur was expelled from the Atlanta Metro Baptist Association. The post says the church was kicked out because, quote, we invited all people to participate into full participation in our faith community. The decision comes after some criticism regarding the Decatur Church's openness to the LGBTQ community. A disturbing discovery at a UGA frat house. Someone left several dead animals on the Kai Size fraternity's front porch, and police say the fraternity member found the animals. Several bloody latex gloves were also found at the scene, and police are, are searching for the person who was possibly responsible. However, they believe it may be a prank committed by another campus fraternity. The Hawks don't have a lot of wins out there, folks, but the fans love going to the games. A new survey ranks the Hawks and State Farm Arena as the league's top venue for overall game experience. Thousands of ticket holders league-wide were polled. They voted on key factors such as arena ushers, in-game entertainment, technology, and a whole lot more. Well, this is the second year in a row the Hawks snagged the top spot. Brace fans know all about the freeze. You'll be happy to know he's already in mid-season form, but it's not just for those races on the warning track at Truist Park. The freeze, whose real name is Nigel Talton, is training for a chance to compete in the Olympics in Tokyo this summer. As Alex Glaze shows us, the Braves helped him realize he could make that dream a reality. You know the freeze, but the man wearing the freeze costume has dreams that extend far beyond racing on the warning track of Truist Park. I'm just enjoying his journey. The journey Nigel Talton is on will take him to Albuquerque, New Mexico for U.S. Indoor Nationals and will hopefully lead to Tokyo this summer for the Olympics. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but the group I train with, the coach I got, the support I got, um, it's just about getting rest, training, so... I'm just excited to get outdoor started. Getting to the Olympics has been a longtime goal for the 29-year-old sprinter. But in 2016, his dream got sidelined when he tore his hamstring two weeks before Olympic trials. I thought it was like it was over. I wanted to quit track. But then the Braves created the freeze and coincidentally breathed new life into Nigel's love for sprinting. Push, push, push. He's working with Olympic gold medalist Dwight Phillips and has seen major improvements in a short period of time. My time dropped last week, so I qualified for nationals again. So last time I went to indoor nationals was 2013 when I was at Kennesaw State. His goals are clear, but he also realizes he won't be defined by the results at track meets. His journey doesn't end there. If it's meant to be, if God want me to make that team, I'll make that team. If not, if you want me to continue to inspire other kids or other people not to give up on their dreams, I'm, I'm down with it. All right, straight ahead, this is a story so many of you loved on our Facebook page, how one woman became the Navy's first African-American female pilot to earn her wings. Full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. 
you won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us. Use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen have you seen it Everybody's learned how to drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire yeah. week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, <laughs> on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, away. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you have to do what I say in the No, 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 man, ain't faded. You could have sued what you're doing with freedom. Man. She was the Navy's first African American female pilot to earn her wings. Her story fascinated so many of you on the 11 Alive Facebook page. So we wanted to share how Brenda Robinson is teaching the next generation all about what it takes to fly. Here's Ruby Durham with our sister station in Charlotte. When Brenda Robinson was growing up in the 50s outside Philadelphia, physically flying a plane wasn't a thought of mind. She thought being a woman in aeronautics meant being a flight attendant. But thanks to a career study program at her high school, she was able to broaden her view of aviation. When I got to go to an air traffic control tower, I stepped onto the tower, I looked around, and I said, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. After high school, Robinson enrolled at Dowling College in New York, one of the best aviation schools on the East Coast. She eventually became the first black woman in Dowling's history to graduate with a degree in aeronautics and also earned a private pilot's license. And boom! You know, I just went for the stars after that. Robinson then went on to join the U.S. Navy in 1977, one year after women were authorized to attend the Naval Academy. They were selecting 10 women a year out of the nation, and I was one of those 10. In 1980, she became the first African-American female pilot in the U.S. Navy to earn her wings. But it wasn't easy. No matter what she accomplished, Robinson always felt she had to prove she was qualified, especially as an African-American woman. Says I didn't look like the model in the norm, then the thought that maybe I already know is not given to me. I have to earn it every time. And that she did. In fact, her work ethic led her to achieve the rank of lieutenant commander as a Navy pilot. She successfully completed 155 aircraft carrier landings and flew seven types of aircraft, touching the skies from the East Coast to Guam, Germany, the Middle East, and Italy. She was a Navy pilot for 30 years before becoming one of the first African-American female pilots for American Airlines, a position she held for 17 years until she retired in 2008. Today, she calls Charlotte home and serves as an instructor at Flight Ride in Concord. She's also the founder of Aviation Camps of the Carolinas, where she teaches and offers teenagers hands-on opportunities to learn about aviation at airports around the nation. You know, the world is, you know, uh, as they see it, and it's very finite until you press their button. 
This rain over North Georgia continues to fall apart out there tonight in that whole coverage of rain just gets smaller and smaller and smaller as this shrinks up there. The only thing that is left is uh, right up here in northeast Georgia where we still see a few light showers near Dahlonega, Lumpkin County, Dawson County, a little bit of light shower activity there, White County, also into Habersham County, uh, Rabin County, Stevens County getting a little bit of that light rain as well, and also parts of Banks County, and that's moving up toward the north and east. And as we move back into Alabama, where a lot of this moisture has been moving in from, we're seeing that falling apart out there too. So tonight, just know you're not going to have a big time coverage of rain around. Maybe just a little bit of light rain here and there as the system moves on through the area. So uh, let's take a look at the bigger picture. I want to show you these temperatures that we have around North Georgia right now. We actually made it up uh, to 70 degrees for a high temperature today. Uh, you know, Macon broke a record. They got up to 81 degrees in Macon today. So we were a little bit lower than that. And right now, these temperatures still on the mild side. We're at 60 degrees here in town, but we do have some 50s in North Georgia, 57 in Canton, 52 in Blairsville, and then upper 50s in Covington and the more of these 60s here south and east of the city. For the next 12 hours, we'll see these temperatures pretty much holding in the 50s. Still a good coverage of clouds around, but not really active showers. Maybe a little bit of mist and drizzle in some spots. We move down into the 50s here by tomorrow morning. I know this graphic is showing a 20% chance for a shower, but I really think that most of us are going to be dry for the first part of the day tomorrow. Still with clouds around, maybe a couple of peaks of sunshine here and there, but the showers won't start kicking back in until later on in the afternoon. And then we have a storm threat coming in for Wednesday night overnight into early on Thursday. And the Storm Prediction Center puts us in what is called a marginal risk, the dark green color indicating that level one out of five risk for some stronger storms. The level two risk is back into uh, northwest Georgia and into Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana. It's going to be this area that has the better chance of a little more widespread coverage of stronger storms. We're only going to have a couple of isolated stronger storms here. And the main threats would be damaging winds, uh, some heavy rain at times with the flash flooding risk. Isolated tornadoes is on the low end. It's not quite zero, but it's just a really low chance for any isolated tor tornadoes to occur with this system as it moves our way. So tonight and tomorrow early, we're dealing with fewer showers around with mostly cloudy skies, but then the storm threat will increase overnight Wednesday into early on Thursday, and then it's going to kick out of here, and that's going to usher in some cooler air that will begin to feel on Thursday night and then really feeling more of that cooler air here for Friday and also for Saturday. So here's the timeline. Not a lot of activity here overnight. And then in the morning, we have the clouds around. And even at lunchtime, most areas are dry with just a few showers trying to kick up there in North Georgia. Once we get into the late afternoon hours, we'll begin to see a few of these scattered showers just developing still pretty light, but not the storms yet. And then watch the arrival of this system. This is at four in the morning on Thursday, where you can see this line that's going through Northwest Georgia, stretching back into Alabama that continues to sweep into our area. This is at seven on Thursday, and it's within this line that we have those pockets of heavy rain, the potential for some wind with that. And again, isolated tornado is not out of the question. It weakens as it moves to the east and gets out of here. And then by noon, still a couple of lingering light showers back behind this, but then it all moves out of here in the afternoon and it will cool down late on Thursday night. And then by Friday, it's going to be a dry day, mostly sunny, a low of 34 and a high of 51. We're below freezing Saturday morning with a low of 30 and a high of 52. And then Sunday, back up to 58 with partly cloudy skies. 60s Monday and Tuesday with the rain chance coming back. But right now, it looks like a low end rain chance at 20 to 30 percent. All right, folks, you know what time it is. You see your screen. It is time for a Tuesday's edition of the AC, and we are kicking off with a newly dropped trailer from the new docuseries out by National Geographic. Guess what? Check out the new teaser from their genuous docuseries, which chronicles the life of the Aretha Franklin. <laughs> What kind of music do you really want to make, Miss Franklin? I want to make hits, Mr. Wexler. 
You do not want to miss Academy Award nominee Cynthia Erivo as Aretha Franklin in the third season of the critically acclaimed global anthology series titled Genius Aretha. Now, in the teaser, we see the legend face the stage, even get into a domestic dispute. And keep in mind, they have been filming this docuseries in Atlanta for quite some time now, and this series is definitely going to be revealing a lot about the lead singer. It premieres May 25th on Nat Geo. And catch a casting. It's time for a casting call. This is for a new TV show and it's a big deal because it's director selected role. So do you have a hairy chest? Well, they want you. <laughs> Casting directors are looking for a male 18 or up who portrays a, a white man, appears to be between 20 and 30 years old, specifically looking for someone with a fit build and like I said, that hairy chest. So you will be wearing a sleeveless shirt in this scene, so no visible tattoos. You must have zero facial hair and be available to film on Monday the 24th in Fairburn. All details to this hairy chest casting call on our AC Facebook page. All right, friend, I don't qualify. All right, straight ahead, after years of hoping and praying tonight, this Douglas County family is finally complete. Clark, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie want to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, Auntie. No. <laughs> Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. I'm no, my movement ain't fading. You can assume what you're doing with freedom. Yeah. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. <laughs> So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Like got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Right, right. About that. The lives of three boys in Douglas County changed today. That's right, and, and forever. They woke up three as three of as three of 14,000 children in Georgia's foster care system, and tonight they're going to be tucked in by their new adoptive parents. Here's Cheryl Prehigh. So rewarding. My life has changed. It's a day they'll celebrate together every year. This day, they officially became a family of five. It's adoption day for brothers Devin, Marcel, and Jaden, six, seven, and eight years old. It's about the love of a child and bringing them in and allowing them to feel secure and play. And two zip lines. They have felt the love of family from Bobby and Curtis Minter for three years. Go! 
playing with, learning and receiving love from their foster parents. But now it's mom and dad, family, forever. You adopt three amazing boys. It's, it's priceless. We have uh, more rain tomorrow, but I think we'll see a break early on with those showers and storms coming in overnight Wednesday into Thursday. Mm. Early Thursday is the best chance for that, and then we clear out drier, cooler for Friday and Saturday. All, All right. right, this same trio, we're going to see you on 11 Alive. We're up late at 11. We'll see you then. Prime time is next at 10. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. We vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient, fun. convenient, but they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. Ah. You're all, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. New at 10, life and death questions about the life and death of a five-year-old girl. Police in Cobb County say she was murdered. And now they are charging her own mother with murder and strangling her. There is much to find out about this unfolding tragedy. John Sherrick on the story for us tonight. Saturday, as the snow began to fall in Cobb County, Phyllis Lee videoed the fun outside her church where she just attended a weekly prayer meeting. Miss Lee tells me she'd invited her new neighbors, Shakina Akbar and Akbar's five-year-old daughter, to come along. they just moved in to her apartment building from Alabama. She says Akbar's toddler son was away visiting relatives, and Lee tells me as mom and daughter left the church, they seemed happy, trying to catch snowflakes. 
Police say 48 hours later, Shakina Akbar attacked her five-year-old daughter, strangled her inside their apartment. The arrest warrant says the girl had visible injuries, bruising throughout her body, visible injuries to her neck, consistent with strangulation. Phyllis Lee, who asked that we not show her, is aching in disbelief. She says the girl did have a breathing tube in her neck, but never saw any indication of abuse. It's confusing. It's heartbreaking. She seemed like she's a pretty good mother. I've seen her apartment and everything was neat and everything. And she's telling me all the stuff that she wants to do with the kids. And I'm still in disbelief about it. Lee wondering what she could have done. Shakina Akbar in the Cobb County Jail as police investigate what would have led her to kill her own daughter. Taking a look at our weather tonight, this is a live look at Midtown Atlanta where the roads are just a little bit damp right now. We had some showers earlier out there today, but we are expecting more tomorrow morning. It's a beautiful shot, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it gorgeous. It's like where the streets have no name. You know, it's uh, some sort of like, you know, old time Hollywood look right yeah, there. Yeah, you know, that you? was a good shot by Pete Smith. Okay, it was indeed. Let's uh, get an update about what we can expect in the days ahead. Our Chris Holcomb is here right now. Yeah, we're watching this rain really falling apart out there tonight. We had a better coverage over North Georgia earlier, but as that moves to the north and east, it is falling apart. Nothing much going on in Atlanta except for the damp conditions. You just saw uh, that video from Atlanta where the roads are still wet, and it's really not going to be drying off too much. I really think the roads will still pretty be pretty damp in the morning too, uh, even though we're not expecting as much heavier rain or anything during the overnight hours. I'm going to widen out a little bit and show you uh, what we're watching out to the west, and even even the shower activity in Alabama is starting to fall apart too. So I'm really thinking tomorrow morning you may be driving in on some wet roads, but I'm not really thinking we're going to see active rain in the morning. That's going to hold off until later in the day. So I think we'll have a few hours tomorrow morning where it's going to be dry even to around lunchtime. And then once we get into the afternoon, we'll begin to see some scattered showers redeveloping and then late tomorrow night overnight into early on Thursday we have the potential for some storms to roll in. So here's what we're watching out there right now with the bigger picture. You can see here, this is a live video look from our tower cam there in the Coweta County area in Noonan. And yeah, there you see, even though it's not actively raining, the roads are still wet and it's going to be a pretty damp night out there, even though uh, no heavy rain moving through. Here's our forecast track for the overnight hours. And you can see here, not a lot of rain around, maybe some mist and drizzle left from some of the clouds that we have around, but nothing really active. And even in the morning, at 7 o'clock, no rain coming down at this time, but then later on in the day, scattered showers redevelop. Stay with us. We're going to break down those storm chances and even show you uh, if we'll see some damaging winds and maybe even some isolated tornadoes. We'll talk about those chances in a few minutes. All right, thanks, Chris. With more storms expected this week, now is the time to go ahead and download the 11 Alive app. You can use it to get weather alerts and receive those thunderstorm and possible tornado warnings, even if your power goes out. All right, we have new developments about the coronavirus. 200 people in Georgia are now self-monitoring themselves for symptoms of the deadly virus. They all recently returned home from China. We want to make clear, very clear, these are not confirmed cases and the people are not showing symptoms at this point. The move is out of precaution to keep the virus from spreading here in the United States. New at 10 today is supposed to be the day the Cleveland family welcomed three year old Ruby into their lives as the cases of the coronaviruses and the death toll continues to rise. The family's journey to China, it was postponed indefinitely. And they talked to Hope Ford about their journey to bring Ruby home. But I never, ever, ever in a million years would have guessed that this would have spread to the point of shutting down their whole yeah. country. Ivy and Noah Cleveland prepared to fly to China, booked six babysitters for their sons. After two years of trying to adopt Ruby, the coronavirus outbreak canceled their adoption date. Her room is already set up. This is what she was going to wear for being finalized as a Cleveland. A wall of hair bows next to the bed. The blue one is her future brother's favorite. Her brothers were going to talk to her through the spare so they could hear her. She could hear their voice. Ruby, abandoned behind a toilet in a hospital at six months old, was the first child the Cleveland saw in a file sent to them by their adoption agency. The family says they're getting their strength through God, which is why they didn't hesitate to give her the middle name, Faith. And although their main concern is Ruby, they haven't let the gravity of the coronavirus outbreak escape them. Our prayers and thoughts go out to the people that are in China that have lost people that they'll never get back. And for us, we've never 
met Ruby, but we'll get to Ruby. And so the wait continues. They already know they love Ruby. Now they're looking forward to the moment they get to tell her. There's going to be a lot of emotion. There's going to be a lot of just praise in the Lord for that moment. The family says the hardest part now is not knowing. Another adoption date has not been set. The Clevelands were happy to find out Ruby's orphanage is secure with no one allowed in or out without a medical screening. All right, well, a father, son, and his girlfriend are among the four people killed in a plane crash in Gordon County. Roy Smith and his co-pilot Ray Sluck were on board along with Smith's son, Morgan, and Morgan's girlfriend, Savannah Sims. All four were killed when the small plane crashed in the woods in Gordon County on Saturday. They were headed to Nashville, but disappeared from radar near Cherokee County. The investigation is still ongoing, but they're looking into whether Saturday's rain and snow could have been a factor out there. A Cobb County mom facing felony charges. She's accused of killing her five year old daughter. According to a warrant, police believe Shekinah Akbar assaulted the child and may have strangled her. The warrant shows the child had bruises all over her body when she was taken to the hospital. The idea is to prepare students for the worst case scenario and then hopefully save lives if there's ever a gunman on campus. But now two national teacher unions say some active shooter drills are ineffective. They could traumatize students. The report released today recommends not including students in the drills and offers districts guidelines about how to include kids. Joe Hankey is walking us through the report. The report on the impact of school safety drills for active shootings comes from the American Federation of Teachers, National Educators Association, and the organization Every Town for Gun Safety. They found in 2005, 40% of American public schools held lockdown drills to be prepared if there is a shooting. 95% did in 2015. In Fulton County Schools, the head of safety and security says the district conducts active shooter drills as part of a larger safety plan. Although active shooters, the active shooter scenario will have the greatest adverse impact, Statistically, our greatest concern is weather. Dr. Shannon Flunori says the district's plan comes after talking with and collaborating with districts across the country to create responsible drills. The report released today points to an unannounced code red drill at a Florida high school in 2018, leading to chaos and panic attacks with students believing it was not a drill at all, but a real threat on campus. Fulton says it avoids such a scenario by not having unannounced drills. We don't want to have the unintended consequences of um, unintentionally putting them in a position where their fear of this event overtakes them to the point that it has a psychological impact or a negative psychological impact upon them. Today's report recommends districts carefully consider drills and if they include students and teachers, they should not mimic an actual incident. It also states parents, students and teachers should have advanced notice and the drills should be tailored to the student's age and include input from school mental health professionals. Children that are under five, six, seven years old live in the world of fantasy and magic. Psychotherapist Eddie Reese says that for the youngest students, realistic drills can lead to serious fears and even teens can be impacted. He suggests parents talking with their children afterwards. They go, yeah, it was all right, and it doesn't really bother them fine. Uh, but there are children that can be really scared, really imagine that it's going to happen. A family of eight in Kingston, Georgia, narrowly escapes a house fire thanks to a brave five-year-old. He had burns on his hands, but still knew he had to save his family. This is Noah with singed hair and burns on his fingers, still cracking a little smile there. The fire chief says Noah woke up to the fire and immediately jumped into action. The only way out was through a window. So Noah grabbed his two year old sister and they got out of there. They ran to a nearby relative's home who alerted the rest of the family, saving seven people in all. The chief says the fact that Noah did this and he's only five, it's pretty remarkable. And doing that, he received some minor burns to his arm and his hands, of course, singed hair, and his two-year-old sister received some burns to her feet. But because of his quick actions, he also alerted the rest of the family members, so a total of eight family members were able to get out of the house with only minor injuries and smoke inhalation. The fire chief says the fire started from an overloaded socket. He also says there were no working smoke detectors, something you know they always encourage. On Friday, the fire department plans to honor little Noah with a life-saving award there with a ceremony afterwards. You can find out more about that on 11alive.com. A mother in Metro Atlanta wants to know why only certain infants get a medication that keep them from getting RSV. We verify coming up next.
toughest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. You know, like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. No. <laughs> Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. It is a frightening diagnosis for any parent. RSV is a respiratory virus that makes it really hard for children to breathe. They wheeze and they, they cough. They really labor. And one viewer wanted to know why there is not more information about a medication that could potentially keep babies from getting sick. Here's Liza Lucas. My daughter Mabel was hospitalized in the ICU due to RSV for 10 days. We found out that there is an injection called Synergis that can prevent or lessen the severity of the RSV infection. When we asked to have the injection, we were all told that she doesn't qualify because she was born at 30 weeks instead of 29 weeks. According to the CDC, more than 57,000 kids under age five are hospitalized every year due to RSV. Cassie wants to know why some babies get this drug and others don't. First, we checked with the CDC. It says there's no vaccine to prevent RSV, but paluvizumab sold as synergist may protect some babies. According to Dr. Mary Caserta, research has shown that the benefits of the drug to prevent RSV are limited, with little effect on total hospitalizations and no evidence that it saves lives. The AAP says the medication is more beneficial to high-risk infants, so its guidelines for the medication primarily include babies born before 29 weeks and infants with certain chronic illnesses or a compromised immune system. But what about cost? If not covered by insurance, Synergis runs around $1,600 per vial, according to the company. Each dose helps protect the child for about a month. Dr. Caserta verified cost is considered when deciding policy, but it's not the main reason for the AAP's guidelines. To recap, we verified there's still no vaccine for RSV. And when it comes to Synergis, the Academy says its guidelines are based on who stands to benefit. The Synergis website also indicates that even babies who get the medication can still get RSV. The Academy tells me it's committed to regularly reviewing the data and updating policy as necessary based on new information. Do you have something for us to verify? Send us your questions via Facebook, Twitter, or via email at verify at 11alive.com. Liza, thank you. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb is keeping an eye on the timeline of the storms this week. All right, Chris, let's check out the timeline here with those center storms. Yeah, and I think it's going to be this time tomorrow night when they're not going to be here yet, but we're going to be tracking them moving through Alabama and then approaching our area overnight tomorrow night really into the early morning hours of Thursday. That's going to be the best chance of the stronger storms moving in. Right now, we have just a few lingering light showers around. Nothing really major going on, mainly dry in Atlanta, a little bit of mist and drizzle in some spots. The roads are still very damp out there. And over North Georgia, we've been watching this rain shield that was covering us up with light rain earlier, really falling apart and shrinking up. There are still just a few spotty showers left over in Northwest Georgia, 
Uh, again, very light stuff around uh, parts of Dade, Walker County, Tatuga County as well. These showers in Alabama also shrinking up too. There's more back in Mississippi. That's going to keep feeding our way. So we have a very moist air mass out there but we're not going to see real active rain. Here's a live look in Rome. Let's take a look at this uh, on the big screen and you can see kind of what we're talking about there with uh, uh, you can see some raindrops that are on the lens, but no real active rain falling in Rome right now, but the roads are still wet. It's just going to be a really damp night out there and most likely in the morning. A lot of our roads are still going to be wet as well for your drive into work, even though we don't see active showers in the morning. Now tomorrow night, mainly overnight Wednesday, into early on Thursday is where we're going to see that next line of strong storms that'll move through. Atlanta is in this green color, which is the marginal risk. That's the level one of five risk area for that potential for just a few isolated stronger storms. The level two risk is in northwest Georgia, back into Alabama, Mississippi, and also Louisiana. That's where we have the chance for a little better chance for a few more storms with some damaging winds, maybe isolated tornadoes and flash flooding. Now, our tornado risk in our area tomorrow is going to be on the low end, but it's still not zero. So we'll just keep a close eye on that. We do see fewer showers out there tonight and early in the morning, but then late tomorrow night, that's when that storm threat comes back into our area for the overnight hours, Wednesday into early Thursday. And then as that moves out during the day on Thursday, we will begin to dry out late Thursday and then Friday and Saturday look dry, but it's also going to be colder with our high temperatures going back into the 50s and we'll even see temperatures that go below freezing by Saturday morning. So here's the timeline tonight. As you see, not much going on in the morning. We're going to have that good coverage of clouds around, but I really think we're going to see a break in the rain for the first part of the day tomorrow, even at lunchtime dry in Atlanta, but a few lighter showers over North Georgia and in the afternoon hours, not much happening out here, but a few scattered showers beginning to develop a little bit more, mainly light stuff. Can you see this at the top corner of your screen? That's the beginning of that line of stronger storms that rolls in overnight. This is for Thursday morning at about four o'clock in the morning where you see that coming through northwest Georgia nearing Rome and then nearing the Atlanta area by between six and seven in the morning uh, with that line moving through. I think that'll be past us by nine o'clock and then that line weakens as it moves to the east and then that storm risk is over as it moves away and just a couple of lingering showers still left behind that system as it moves in later on Thursday and then we begin to dry out and cool off as well. So very warm air Wednesday and Thursday 70 Wednesday 65 Thursday with those showers and storms earlier. I really think our highest temperature of the day Thursday is going to be in the morning and then we cool off into the 50s in the afternoon and even cooler in the evening. We're down into the 30s Friday morning with a high of 51 below freezing Saturday morning at 30 with a high of 52 dry Sunday with a few more clouds and then low rain chances Monday and Tuesday with high temperatures that go back into the 60s. Take a look at your wow weather moment of the day. We showed you this last night, but thought you might want to see it again today. This is from Missy Baker Smith in Rome, Georgia saying no fishing from the dock because that sign is almost underwater from all the rain that we had yesterday. We had a lot of pictures that you were sharing with us for uh, uh, flooded areas. So we would love for you to share your weather wow moments with us. And the best way to do that is from our 11 Alive Storm Trackers page on Facebook. Just search 11 Alive Storm Trackers. Find our group, ask to become a member. We will approve you, and then you can be a part of this exclusive weather community where we share weather pictures, weather videos, and weather information all around the area. I'm Francesca Amaker with the A Scene. I've got my hands on the new teaser for Aretha Franklin's new docu-series that's shooting right here in Atlanta. It's coming up in the A Scene. America. Come on, man. It's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home. From different backgrounds, languages, and religions, and who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot, full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. 
So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. No. <laughs> Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. A Georgia Tech graduate is getting some questions about the Super Bowl because people are now finding out she was part of the halftime show. <laughs> Rayanna Brown danced alongside Shakira. About 102 million viewers watched that moment. The 2017 Tech graduate lives in Atlanta. She's a full-time engineer consultant for a software development firm and even runs her own dance company well-rounded woman there doing all this she was able to find time to audition and rehearse driving back and forth between Atlanta and Miami I actually wasn't that nervous which is kind of weird normally I get really nervous but I felt very peaceful and excited and I was mostly excited for my family because they were really excited <laughs> that I was dancing in the Super Bowl Go ahead Rayanna you can do anything you want to do even all of that she says she learned about a lot about managing time and balancing a career in dance when she was at Georgia Tech. All right, folks, you know what time it is. You see your screen. It is time for Tuesday's edition of the AC, and we are kicking off with a newly dropped trailer from the new docuseries out by National Geographic. Guess what? Check out the new teaser from their genuous docuseries, which chronicles the life of the Aretha Franklin. Miss Franklin. I want to make hits, Mr. Wexler. You do not want to miss Academy Award nominee Cynthia Erivo as Aretha Franklin in the third season of the critically acclaimed global anthology series titled Genius Aretha. Now in the teaser, we see the legend face the stage, even get into a domestic dispute. And keep in mind, they have been filming this docuseries in Atlanta for quite some time now. And this series is definitely going to be revealing a lot about the lead singer. It premieres May 25th on Nat Geo. And catch a casting. It's time for a casting call. This is for a new TV show. And it's a big deal because it's director selected role. So do you have a hairy chest? Well, they want you. <laughs> Casting directors are looking for a male 18 or up who portrays a, a white man, appears to be between 20 and 30 years old, specifically looking for someone with a fit build and like I said, that hairy chest. So you will be wearing a sleeveless shirt in this scene, so no visible tattoos. You must have zero facial hair and be available to film on Monday the 24th in Fairburn. All details to this hairy chest casting call on our AC Facebook page. Jeff isn't going to be there. Don't you worry. He is not going to be there. You know, I, uh, as far as those bullet points, I think I was three or four. Three or four? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Leave it up to the people to decide which one was left out. That is All right. Correct. I'm headed out to get ready for up late on 11 <laughs> Live coming up at 11 p.m. We'll see you there with more news and weather. You and I push this boundary. We get in trouble here sometimes, y'all. Yeah. We like to push it, push yeah, it. Yeah, we do. Push it, push it. <laughs> All right. We'll see you tonight with Ron. All right, here's what's coming up. Calls tonight for two public officials to resign after neither called 911 after realizing a driver may have hit a man. 
It is an investigation you will only see from our reveal team on 11 Alive and the 11 Alive stations here at the Big 36. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. We vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. would wait the next week. You're all, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it. Now to an exclusive reveal investigation. A Georgia man was left dying in a ditch for more than an hour. Nobody called 911, including a local police chief and a Georgia lawmaker. There is growing outrage and calls for accountability tonight on social media. Here's Reveal investigator Faith Abube with the story. This is uh, my work truck. Aaron Key's work truck has become both a symbol of comfort Ugh. and of pain. On one hand, it keeps him busy so grief doesn't consume him. I mean, I'm a painter. But it also reminds him every day of his older brother. I had plans for my brother. He was wanting to work with me, and he was supposed to go with me the next day. Instead, that day, September 12, 2019, he found out Eric died just three miles from home. A driver hit him while he was riding his bicycle down North Main Street in Cedartown. He's... He's my brother, man. And I wasn't ready for him to go. Polk 
County Coroner Tony Brazier also wasn't ready for what he would learn about the crash. We realized early on that this was going to be a, a problematic case. Documents obtained by the reveal show the driver, Ralph Dover, did not stop after hitting Eric. He kept driving with the hood and the passenger side of his windshield caved in. He drove almost a mile before coming to a stop here in this parking lot. But he didn't call police. He didn't call 911. He called a friend. That friend is attorney and Georgia State Representative Trey Kelly. Here's an old picture of the two of them together on Dover's Facebook page. The best case scenario, okay, let's say he told them, I think I hit a dog or a deer. Are you going to drive a mile away and call a lawyer? No. While Eric laid in the ditch dying, the state representative called Cedartown Police Chief Jamie Newsom at home. Chief Newsom found out on that call Dover might have hit a person, but the reveal has learned the police chief did not call for medical help either. JK, He called his sergeant on the police radio to call him at home. He tried to micromanage a, a 911 call, not from your home. You can't do that. Hill County 911 told us they could have been at the scene within five minutes. But by this point in time, we've missed the golden hour. When the sergeant eventually arrived, he found Eric's ball cap, then his red bicycle. And then the autopsy report says about 100 feet from the site of initial impact, in the ditch, the officer found Eric barely breathing. This may turn out to be a fatality. If Polk 911 had have gotten this call like it should have gotten, this boy might still be alive today. This mess here stinks to the high heavens. This reeks of the good old boy system. It's just something that, out of a nightmare that you wouldn't believe that would happen and that, somebody, that nobody would do nothing. The Polk County coroner believes someone could have saved Eric. On the death certificate, he wrote, Eric died by homicide in a hit and run crash. But months since the death, there hasn't been a single criminal charge filed in the case. Dover hasn't responded to our request for an interview. But we caught up with Chief Newsom. It is an ongoing investigation, and I'm not at liberty to discuss any of the details. Representative Trey Kelly had the same response. No, Why I'm, didn't you call 911 or ask I'm your, sorry, your friend you. to call 911? Again, uh, I did uh, alert law enforcement, and again, because you, you called of, the police I'm chief sorry, at I'm home. I'm a potential witness in an ongoing investigation. If protocols were broken, Brazier wants them brought to light. I'm not going to allow this to go on on my watch. I'll say whoever behind bars before I see this covered up. We did receive a more detailed statement from Representative Kelly explaining he met Dover at the scene because the driver did not know what he hid. And when he saw a bicycle on the side of the road in the area of the crash, he called police, the police chief, to investigate. So, Faith, now you've heard from the Georgia State Patrol. That's a new update. Yeah, so the Georgia State Patrol investigated this. A spokesperson tells me their probe looked not only into the crash itself, but also what happened afterwards. Five months later, the DA now has the case file. And you can find our full investigation anytime on 11alive.com and the 11 Alive app as well. A Gwinnett County officer who pleaded guilty to punching a driver in the face during a traffic stop is on the stand testifying against another officer charged in the case. That transpired today. Witnesses recorded the traffic stop on video. Robert McDonald accused of stomping on the driver's head after he was already on the ground. Fellow officer Michael Bongiovanni took a plea deal to avoid prison time for punching the driver. Despite the officer's actions, Mr. Bongiovanni says he is not sure how the driver sustained his injuries. I delivered a forearm strike. It was not a punch. It was a tactic that I was taught to turn him around. It was in the upper chest area. You'll have to watch the video again. Um, the totality of the circumstances, that, the taser, him hitting the ground, Officer McDonald, I don't know where the injuries came from. I do know that they came, 
They were photographed, documented, ambulance was called. I can't tell you when he sustained them. Both officers were fired. Now it's a question of whether McDonald will serve time in jail if he is convicted. Tonight, the concern over coronavirus hits close to home. Around 200 people here in Georgia are self-monitoring themselves for symptoms of the coronavirus after returning from China. We want to emphasize these are not confirmed cases and the people are not showing symptoms at this point. Coronavirus has put a, a target on many Asians worldwide who do not have it. Tonight, they are sharing examples of coronavirus-related discrimination on social media. Here's 11 Alive Shinu Her. He has been going through some of the pictures and the video. Hi, I'm, I'm so sorry, but I think that was a very racist comment. Yeah? Yeah. Wow, great. I said you dropped your coronavirus. Yeah, because um, you, can't, you can't just look at me and assume I, I am can't? Chinese. Yeah, Instagram exactly. user Ingrid Chan from Canada posted this video online saying a man told her mother and sister they dropped their coronavirus. When Chan's sister confronted the man, he got defensive. I never even met, I've said it to 10 different people. This incident is now just one of many posted on the internet from this tweet in Spain saying hashtag I am not a virus in different languages to this tweet in Rome showing a bar forbidding people from China to enter. In Los Angeles, this woman posted a video on Facebook. She told NBC News she became concerned when she realized this man was talking about the coronavirus. She tells NBC News she didn't report it to police, but wanted to spread awareness and stop the sensationalizing about the virus from others. All right, she knew her reporting, uh, reporting for us tonight. First, actor Jesse Smollett indicted once again for reporting an attack that police say was a stunt to try and aid his faltering career. A special prosecutor was assigned to look into the case. After the charges against Mr. Smollett were initially dropped with very little explanation, Mr. Smollett had claimed he was a target of a homophobic and racist attack last January, but police believe it was staged so that he would gain national sympathy and it would help his career. The city sued him for overtime incurred during the investigation. Mr. Smollett has countersued for defamation. More people have died from vaping-related lung illnesses. Some troubling numbers. The death toll stands at 64 and more are under investigation. As of February 4th, there have been over 2,700 cases of lung injuries linked to e-cigarettes or vaping products. We are watching that area of rain break up a bit for the overnight hours, but we are not finished with the rain yet. We're still closely watching a developing system out to the west that will increase our storm risk late tomorrow night and into Thursday. We'll talk about some of the potential impacts for you. All right, coming up in sports, RJ Hunter back in Atlanta. Does this former Boston first round draft pick have the same kind of dreams of making it? With his second chance in the NBA, will he get an opportunity? We'll go one-on-one -on -one with him next in sports. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh -huh. 
Where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and retire. <laughs> It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. I'm no, 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 You could have super. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. We are watching results roll in tonight from the first presidential primary of 2020. Already there have been some interesting moments in New Hampshire, and there always are interesting moments in New Hampshire. You're never quite sure what to expect, but nonetheless, the very small town of Dixville Notch has a tradition of casting ballots at the stroke of midnight. Of the five votes cast, three wrote in Michael Bloomberg's name. One new poll shows Senator Bernie Sanders passing former Vice President Joe Biden nationally for the first time. Mr. Biden did not uh, stick around to see the results in New Hampshire, off to South Carolina, where he's hoping to bring more African-American voters to help buoy his faltering campaign right now. Some might be wondering why such a small state gets to hold the country's first primary, particularly since it's seen as a springboard, as the race shifts into high gear. So let's connect the dots. Here goes. We know voters in Iowa already had their say, but that's a caucus. New Hampshire is the first primary in the country, and it's been that way since 1920, and not really by design. It's just how the dates shook out. By the 1950s, the state was getting a lot of attention by being first. By the 70s, the state had passed a law that said it had to be first by a week, and it elected a secretary of state, Bill Gardner, who made it his life's mission to keep New Hampshire's prominent primary spot. In fact, he still holds the position today. He's also fought off big wigs from both parties who have tried to change the date. So while the rest of the country questions why such a small state with so few minorities gets to go first, voters in New Hampshire will continue to head to the polls before the rest of us. Some political updates for you tonight. Uh, candidate Andrew Yang has dropped out of the race. This comes as he expected a poor performance in New Hampshire's primary. He did about 3% tonight. He's 45 years of age, but he got a lot of attention. Uh, he promoted his signature issue of universal basic income by announcing during a debate that he would choose individuals to receive monthly $1,000 checks. Mr. Yang built a, a following that started largely online because he was giving away some money, but it expanded to give him enough donors and polling numbers to qualify for the first six debates. He certainly has stirred the pot during the campaign as short as it was for him. A two and a half million dollar security enhancement could actually make Fulton County voting machines less secure. That is the warning from a tech expert who says that hackers could tap into it during the next uh, primary election, which is coming up, of course, next month in the South. 11 Alive's Doug Richards explains. This is our two station 
vote center. Fulton County is buying 800 of these metal cabinets, which will hold many of the new voting machines the state is delivering for use in next month's presidential primary. You can move the wings. Fulton Elections Director Rick Barron showed them to us last week. He says the cabinets will save space and give voters more privacy when they use the state's new ballot marking system. Move it to whatever's comfortable for them. You know those problems. But Rich DeMillo says they're too private, especially if the voter is actually a hacker. It looks like you can get access to the back panel of a touchscreen. Uh, and, and once you have access to the back panel of a touchscreen, you can insert software and do all kinds of things that you would do to a computer to, to mess it up. Dr. DeMillo is a tech expert, the retired dean of computing at Georgia Tech and former chief technology officer at Hewlett Packard. Most counties are expected to put the large, bright touchscreen voting computers on tabletops in plain sight of poll workers and observers. But Fulton County's cabinets, DeMillo says, would conceal the hands of possible hackers. That would take seconds. It would be largely undetectable, I think. Barron told us last week he took tampering into consideration when Fulton County spent two and a half million dollars for the cabinets and says a hacker would likely draw the attention of poll workers. With these, because people are, are concerned with tampering, they, you don't want to completely conceal the electronic equipment so that no one can see what's happening inside. They're um, not very secure. Fulton County bought the cabinets in part to keep the voting systems secure from thieves who might break into polling places. Fulton County expects to use a portion of them in next month's presidential primary. They hope to roll out the rest of them for another primary in May. Still watching that little bit of light rain that's left over in North Georgia fall apart even more. We're still going to have a good coverage of clouds around and it, maybe even a little bit of mist and drizzle in some spots, but nothing really big going on here in Atlanta. Let me take you up to Northwest Georgia where we've been watching a little bit of light rain still lingering around parts of Dade and Walker County. We had a little bit of that near Rome earlier and the roads are still wet and damp over many areas of North Georgia right now and a little more moisture trying to feed in back from the uh, Alabama area, but that is also falling apart. And then there's even more in Mississippi. So this just goes to show you we are still in that air mass where another frontal boundary is going to be moving through our area late tomorrow night, and that's going to increase our not only chances for rain, but also the risk for some storms coming up for tomorrow night into early on Thursday morning. So take a look at the bigger picture. You can see what we're watching out there right now. This is a live look in Rome where we just showed you how Northwest Georgia had a couple little light showers around. Nothing active falling in Rome, but you can see that the roads are still wet as the cars are driving down the street right now live from our tower cam. You can see the reflection there as well as the street lights and red lights uh, in the downtown Rome area right now. Now we are watching that risk for some stronger storms, but that really is going to be overnight Wednesday into early on Thursday. And the green color here indicates the marginal risk or level one out of five risk for a few isolated stronger storms as that system moves through. The higher risk is in the yellow in northwest Georgia, Alabama, southern Tennessee, uh, Mississippi, also into Louisiana, where we could see some of those stronger winds that will be in our area. And those winds, potentially damaging winds, as well as pockets of heavy rain, are in the medium risk category for Wednesday night into early on Thursday. The tornado risk is very low. It's not zero but it is on the very low end. We're not overly concerned about widespread tornadoes with this system for Wednesday night into Thursday. And then this type of system doesn't have a lot of hail with it either. So we're not worried about hail uh, with this uh, storm system moving our way. You can see in the morning, I'm really thinking we're going to see some breaks in the action as far as rain is concerned. We're still going to have clouds around, but no real active rain showers early in the morning or at lunchtime. It's going to be in the afternoon with this southerly flow that we see a few more scattered showers that will develop. And then that line of storms comes in uh, early Thursday morning in northwest Georgia, approaching the Atlanta area around 7 a.m. and then past us by 9 a.m. And then that rain starts to move on out of here during the day. Thursday, we dry out and cool off late Thursday night. By Friday morning, we're down to 34 with a high of 51. Mostly sunny skies Friday, Saturday looking good starting off below freezing though and then a high of 52 58 Sunday and then low rain chances Monday and Tuesday with highs back to the 60s. All right here we are in February so let's talk basketball former Georgia State basketball star RJ Hunter famous for that shot in March Madness but 
A lot has happened since then. A lot of it good, some of it bad. Alex Glaze sat down with the former Boston Celtics first round pick. Let's start talking about today. I mean, you get some, get some minutes. How are, you, how are you feeling out there today? Just trying to catch a rhythm. How do you get that rhythm? Because this isn't your first time switching midseason. Uh, you just got to have patience. Um, it happens faster for some than others. Um, but it's hard. Like, these guys have been doing this since August, and um, just got to figure it out. Back home, though, uh, how special is that for you? Is Do you like that? Because I know for some guys, maybe it's a little bit of a distraction. Maybe they don't want to be around, you know, the stuff they grew up around. How, how do you feel about that? Um, I understand that part of it, um, but I like it. Like, in this business, you don't really get a lot of comfortability. Kind of always on the road by yourself, moving, switching cities or teams every year. So. To wake up in my bed, drive to the gym, leave the gym, drive back to my bed is, is I think, is an advantage. If you did go to Turkey, kind of what went into that decision? Because you'd been in the G League for a couple years. Was that kind of, I don't want to say giving up? Yeah, just trying something different. Like, um, like this is a very short window to play basketball for us. So um, to maximize every opportunity, to try different things, to do different things, live different places. I'm big on that, and um, I had a good opportunity over there, and it was a good experience. Goal still to get to the NBA? Of course, of course. How close do you feel like you are to that goal? You never know. You just never know. Um, opportunities come and strike at weird moments, and um, for me, I've, I've, I've had my moment, and I've taken care of those. Everybody's favorite Skyhawk is Brandon Goodwin from Norcross, officially a full-time member of the of the Hawks, he signed a two-year extension today. He's a Georgia native, and he has worked very hard. He has someone else to thank for helping him work his way up to make his way toward professional basketball. His mother. That helps me a lot knowing that I got support, family, and friends um, right behind me. It's always a relief to sign a new deal, but when that deal is with your hometown team, it has great meaning. I'm actually here. Brandon Goodwin signed a two-year deal with the Hawks in August. Tuesday, he was promoted to the NBA for good, earning a two-year deal. He chose Atlanta because they have a lot of success and to be closer to his mother, Swan. She means everything to me. You know, I, it was just me and her growing up. Been waiting for this day forever. Brandon went to Norcross High School but was regularly in trouble. He was a class clown. <laughs> he was forced to attend New Birth Christian School to work on his behavior. It was a big sacrifice, though. I had to do it because I wanted to see him be more successful than he was. Goodwin's turnaround allowed him to return to Norcross, and his basketball career took off. Now he is getting his chance in the NBA with his mother close by. Going to make sure he comes home, get some good home-cooked meals. She risked everything for me, and you know I just want to do as much as I can to pay her back. Good luck to him. That is it for sports. We'll take a break. Back right after this. Um, yeah. Right, right. About the, that. Well, reward would be slimming, slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, even too. more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Cross Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel is good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate. We just pass it to the side. There's graffiti.
graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> So we're going to see a break in the rain early tomorrow and then a few scattered showers redevelop later in the day. The storm risk is overnight Wednesday, mainly into Thursday morning with some stronger storms rolling through. That exits later on Thursday allows us to dry out and cool off for Friday and Saturday. Back to the 60s next week with the rain chance coming back. A lot of mud around. You know? <laughs> yes, too much. <laughs> Good night, everyone. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they would ah. wait the next week. You're all, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Live's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen have you seen it everybody has learned how to drive so I'm gonna go ahead and retire. <laughs>